Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bunny Vision Movie Night. Uh, we are really happy to have you guys here today. We're going to be watching The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, which is awesome, this. Uh, if you haven't seen this Terry Gilliam movie, you are in for a treat, uh, because in my opinion, it is the best Terry Gilliam movie. Uh, now, of course, a lot of people would uh, more like to point to the movie Brazil or, or other things like that, which are great flicks, too, but uh, uh, and Time Bandits as well. But uh, this, this is my favorite. I love this movie. Uh, it's in my top three of all time, actually, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we are going to talk about a, cu a couple things, particularly E3 here in a minute, but uh, uh, we are happy to see that the stream is working just fine today. Uh, thank you, guys. And uh, if you do me a favor and share this out, please, because uh, my Facebook sharing thing is not working very well. Everything's not working well. But nevertheless, uh, I would like to ask this question first to the panel, though. Uh, Booster, what is your top three, man? Oh. Oh, yeah, I I know this, uh, Director, yeah. No, no, no. What is your top three movies of all time? What, what's the Booster's oh. favorite list, man? Oh, you're going you gonna to shame me publicly, are you? <laughs> no way, dude. I love movies, all movies. All love right. Them. My absolute favorite, one of my absolute favorite movies ever made is The Fountain by Darren Aronofsky. Yes, I know that movie. It's not bad. It's very uh, visually beautiful. It's, it's strange, but it's got the most gorgeous soundtrack, and it makes me sob every time. Like it. It's not a bad flick at all. Uh, what, what, else you, what else? What else? What else you got? Probably Hot Fuzz and The Dark Knight. Oh, oh Those are the ones that come to mind. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Hot Fuzz is uh, that's a great fun movie too. I love that yeah. flick. That's that's funny. Uh, what's the um, what's the American uh, version of that? Uh, it's not it's not an actual version of, it, but it's the same kind of thing. It was Super Troopers. No, mm. because they were making fun yes. of uh, uh, the. Bad Boys, Lethal Weapons. Yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But a yeah. cop co uh, parody comedy, uh, the American one would be Super Troopers, I think it's called. Which is another hilarious movie. I, I thought yeah. that was funny. Although Hot Fuzz is certainly better than that one. Uh, what about you? <laughs> huh? I think Hot Fuzz is much better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hot Fuzz is oh, awesome. Yeah. But but Super Troopers is 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 good movie, though. That's a good fun movie, though. That's that's mm. like a brain dead stupid uh, American comedy though, uh, whereas mm. the Hot Fuzz one is is more clever, more uh, more cerebral, I guess, in its comedy. That's a movie you can watch multiple times and see something new every time. Yeah, catch yeah. something new. Yeah, it's a really well done film. And you know, Simon Pegg has made a name for himself, and congratulations to him. Uh, but I prefer his movies like that, World's End. You know, uh, these kind of um, uh, these kind of movies where. You know, it's it's this parody comedy, this offbeat comedy. I think that's what he does best. But uh, but yeah. I don't I don't begrudge him anything. I'm happy to see all of his success. So good for him. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. how about you, Danelli? What's your top three? Um, my top three is Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. um, then the, the his the contender, which came from uh, the second one, which was um, the uh, Shawshank Redemption. Oh wow! Ooh, I yeah. love that movie. And then I think the third one um, was Time Bandit. Yeah, I'll go with yeah. Time Bandit. Time Bandit is an awesome movie. I do love it. Uh, yeah. But uh, my top three, uh, my top three is very eclectic, actually. Uh, my uh, my number one movie still uh, uh, is uh, Lord of the Rings, and I've just taken the entire trilogy. Uh, but uh, I just love that. <laughs> I couldn't believe it was one of them. It, it, for me, it's very similar to. You know, all of these years not having any good comic book movie, and then uh, and then Marvel coming along and putting out Iron Man and, and Avengers and all the other ones, uh, which is something I never thought I would see. So even though we get we had a few bumpy movies, uh, I'm just ec ecstatic that they exist in, in the end, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings was the same thing for me, but superior. Uh, the Lord of, Rings. Lord of the Rings just a massive jump in special effects technology. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was. Like huge yeah, epic it, battles with creatures and everything. It was, in, yeah, it was an incredible yeah. advancement. It was, and but it also comes down to not just the the obvious fact that uh, Peter Jackson's a, an amazing director. Even King Kong, which gets a lot of crap, uh, You're uh, welcome. it's a really good movie. Um, uh, but uh, the thing uh, also is the dedication the the crew put involved in it, man. Uh, that they literally this... took five years of their life and made those movies. They literally yeah. put five years of their life into that, and and kudos to them, right? Um, yeah, which is kind of fun when you said that. It's like, you know, I enjoy watching the movie, but I enjoy watching the doc 
meant to read the making of even more. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have the uh, I have the extended movie special edition Blu-ray pack the, thing. Yeah. The twenty four hours version. Oh boy. <laughs> but it that's is, what I got. <laughs> it is gorgeous. But that that's my that's my number one movie of all time right now. Yeah. Uh, my number two movie was my number one coming into that, uh, and it's maybe a movie I don't know if a lot of people knew. It's called uh, Le Grand Bleu or The Big Blue. Uh, it's weird because it doesn't sit, sit into the type of movies you would think I would like, because I do like the, uh, you know, Marvel movies, Lord of the Rings, things like that. But, uh, uh, Le Grand Bleu is a French movie. Uh, it has Jean Reno in it. And, uh, I think it's one of his best perform. I don't know what it is about that movie, but it just, it just enthralls me. Uh, it's an amazing movie. You have, if you hadn't seen it, go check it out. Uh, and, uh, my third one is today's. I love the event, uh, Adventures of Aaron Munchausen, and I think it's a brilliantly perfect movie. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Gilliam. Um, uh, the pacing in this movie is incredible, and we're going to check that out real soon. But uh, thank you. i just uh, happy to uh, see what you guys are liking. And uh, uh, Combo Bob, Bob agrees with me. Uh, also, Evan Von Skyver says, A fantastic fear of everything was terrible. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I guess we're talking about Terry Gilliam movies. I don't know, uh, but I don't know that movie offhand. Do you guys recognize that? Um, no, it's it's <laughs> Crispian Mills, in fact. But I have seen that, and it wasn't that great. Oh, it was he, Simon Pig film. I guess he's talking about. Yeah. Oh, Simon <laughs> Pig. Ba- oh. Yeah, it's a Simon Pig where he's a writer I researching see. serial killers, and then he, everything starts coming to life or something like that oh i see well, everything <laughs> stops freaking them out yeah well i mean uh simon Pegg is not great in everything he does but not even close uh I, mm. i'm just saying that i think he's better when he does things like hot fuzz i think that's his real strength um Look, uh, but i know. want to tie him to edgar wright and nick and nick frost he's not allowed to stay away from them he has to do everything with them from now on all right there you go uh but uh but i'm just saying that uh you know, uh, congrats. I'm just saying congratulations to Simon Pegg because I don't know how in the hell he did it, but he got he wormed himself in, into the underskin of uh, Hollywood, and they just given him opportunity after opportunity. So I mean, good for him, right? Uh, because in all all accounts, if you listen to the guy talk and in interviews and stuff, he's a pretty pretty normal dude, right? He's not one of these crazy blind prima donna types. He's not like that at all. He's a very normal guy, uh, and uh, you know. Uh, I, that's that's all I was trying to say with that. But uh, you know, hey guys, uh, over in the chat, why don't you put in your favorite? What is your favorite movie? Your number one movie of all time? Let's uh, see that, and we'll uh, list them off. And I'm very happy that because uh, uh, I did a lot of work yesterday, man, rebooting, reinstalling, doing all kind of stuff to try to make sure that uh, this stream would go. Because yesterday it didn't work, and I do apologize. Uh, but it does seem to turn out it was just YouTube again. So. You know, but I, I'm glad. I'm very happy because I was really worried here uh, today when I hit that button, but it worked. So uh, we're back, sweet. And before we jump into the movie, we do want to take a few moments and uh, let me um, um, just come over here and do this. Well, actually, I should do this first. Uh, so let me uh, real quick just share my screen. And this is going to be weird for a second. I do apologize. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay, good. And if you guys want to forget see... about Paul too, <laughs> everything else was great. Yeah, uh, but if you guys uh, uh, in the panel, you want to see what I'm doing, just click white box me yourself, right? Uh, the way we're doing it now. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, I do want to talk about E3 a little bit before we jump into the movie. We we do want to put a little bit of news before this because you know when uh, well, uh, you know at the 30 minutes past the hour, we're going to shut this stream off and we're just going to be sitting on Rabbit watching the movie together. And we do invite all of you guys to come over. Also, you know, hit that like button and uh, uh, the subscribe, please. We do appreciate that. But the biggest thing you can do is hitting that share button and let people know that we're what we're doing uh so they can come over here but uh definitely try out the rabbit i mean it's not that hard guys uh this link they're putting in you just go over there and, and uh, uh join into it uh sometimes chrome seems a little bit better it's a uh, it doesn't cost you anything and uh sydney watching a movie together is kind of fun uh but uh, we're going to do this first now uh, I do have to say that uh, uh, before I'm just going to uh, go through uh, what is considered uh, from PC World here to be the um, uh, the the biggest interesting points of E3 so far. Uh, this, as you see here, it's the 41 must see uh, PC games. But um, uh, I do want to make a quick mention uh, 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 before we do this, and it it just shows you the complete insanity of things that are going on in the world. Keanu Reeves, 
who arguably is one of the most beloved uh, members of Hollywood for the for the world, right? And it's and we all know why. Uh, it's not because he's an amazing actor. He's not. He's a great action hero. But it's because he's a wonderful human being. We know this because he's proven it to us decade after decade. He's a good person, right? And we love him for it, and we're very happy to. And I think he's almost uh, uh, subconsciously become a bit of a symbol, I think, uh, uh, for that, because he is just this down-to-earth good human who cares about people, right? Uh, but uh, just so you know, just so you're all well informed, well informed, the SJWs have made it a point in the past couple of days to turn Keanu into the villain. They hate him. They hate him. And you know why they hate him? Because he's male. He's in movies that has guns. How dare he? And he is part of the CD Projekt Red. Which is weird. Because uh, CD Projekt Red doesn't seem to have done anything wrong. Uh, but they oh. think it does. You know why? I because know what the they did lead... wrong. What did they do wrong? You tell us. Would you like to know what they did wrong? What did you, they ever, wrong? you know about this little game called Witcher 3? Yeah. Do you know where it's set? Poland. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what it doesn't have it too many of in Poland? I don't white know. White people. Oh, they have too many white people. Oh, I mm -hmm. see. I see. It, was a big, it was a big bloody fuss over Witcher 3 not having enough black people. That's what they attached Witcher 3 for. And yeah, well, that's why they yeah. hate Project Red, because they never rectified that. Well, and and this comment you're making actually fits right into my understanding of what these uh, the the da brain damage these people have because um, mm -hmm. they don't understand uh, they don't bother to research anything. We said this many times, right, Denali? I mean, uh, yeah. if if you actually went and paid attention to Poland and you understood about their culture at all, which doesn't take a lot of research to do, uh, which you would find out is The Witcher is a very old uh, storyline. I think it's coming from a book originally. And uh, it's dealing with a lot of Polish mythologies, right? It's their cultural right. mythologies. And yes. it is a hugely popular thing in Poland. It's been a TV show for decades. Uh, it, is, it is culturally important to them. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore, they're always talking about culture. Well, why don't you respect their culture? Right. Because mm -hmm. that's what isn't, it is. Isn't this a very, uh, how do we put it, American centric view of things? You know, that mm -hmm. because yeah. of our little sensitivities in the West, we have to have enough black people here, enough people of color in here. But then we start enforcing that onto European people. Yeah. Some of these people have never even seen a black person in their life, <laughs> right? Well, Would you expect a medieval Japanese game to have a large percentage of black people in it? It's ridiculous. No, no. no. And, and actually, it's interesting you mentioned that because Ghost of Tsushima is actually based on actual historical events, and the the guy in there is representing a a, a legendary. You know, I don't know. We don't know if he's 100 percent true, uh, true or not, but representing a hero uh, from that event. So even you know, we, it's a perfect example of what you just said because here is a historical Japanese movie, and there's no white people. Uh, excuse me, game, and there's no white people at all, as there shouldn't be. Mm. I mean, 1274 mm -hmm. Japan, uh, it, it should not have white people. No, definitely not. Right, that time Japan was kicking the foreigners out. No, that this is long before any of that happened, dude. This is way long ago. Well, there used to be some foreigners, and they kept it in trades, and then, then it's a period of opening and not opening because it's in 1272, around the uh, whole civil war between. No, 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 that well, was no. centuries later. Uh, the uh, not, uh, not not the not the not the Magi restoration. I'm talking about the other civil war that they were doing, where Takanao got into power. No, 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 no. That was centuries later. Uh, Europeans mm -hmm. didn't start involving themselves in uh, China. Uh, excuse me, Japan until the uh, 16th century, uh, and then mm -hmm. by the beginning of the 17th century, around 1600, 1603, uh, is when Tokugawa came to power and he basically kicked them all out and uh, he made it uh, serious crimes to follow the Christianity. Yada yada yada. He's the one that yeah. shut down uh, that that type of thing. And and that I don't want to get into that conversation because you get me going for a long time. But uh, no, twelve seven <laughs> twelve seventy four is long before this. This is uh, the era after uh, Chinggis Khan died and uh, Kublai was in charge, and he wanted oh, to right, prove right. himself equal to his father, uh, and uh, yada yada yada. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm just just happened and 
That's right, mm-hmm. twice actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, that's a good point, uh, Booster. Uh, let me see here in the chat. We do see that uh, I got a I, I got a jet. Enjoy. Well, thank you, Matthew. Uh, how's it going, guys? Uh, Roger says, uh, "What's this movie about, dude? It's an awesome this movie. It's about uh, German mythology, actually. A German f- uh, fairy tale is what it really is." Um, uh, uh, can we forget about Paul too? Or are we talking about Paul Blart too? I don't know. We could forget about I mean, Paul Blart. About Paul the together. movie Paul with uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, where they come. <laughs> Across a alien played by all oh, right, all right. Buddy, yeah. Get his name. That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and Eagle Forty Three says uh, Luigi's Mansion Three best E three game uh, 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 so far. Hey, you know we were talking about this before. Um, uh, I think we all agree that uh, as far as showing gameplay and actually showing real games, Nintendo's taken this uh, E three this year. Oh yeah. I mean they yeah. have. They have. Uh, no, I Louis... think it's easier because they don't have to do the amazing graphics. I mean, their graphics is awesome, but they don't have. This is true. This is true, and they can more <laughs> they can more concentrate on gameplay. But uh, yeah, um, uh, you know, uh, A Tale of Two Cities, nineteen thirty five, was my favorite film. Wow, Nick, good choice, dude. Uh, I haven't even thought about it in a long time. Eagle forty three says or oh, arsenic and old lace, interesting, or DOA. <laughs> All right, dude. That is a guilty pleasure, though. I get that. I get that response. Uh, What's thanks. that? Get or alive? Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Uh, it's a it's a fun guilty guilty pleasure. It's like Mortal Kombat or a Street Fighter or something like that, right? <laughs> they're not great films, but they're they're fun, you know. Uh, Eagle Forty Three yeah. says thanks. I uh, haven't watched The Tale of Two Cities, uh, but I'll check it out, dude. You should. It's a really good movie. Um, and now talk about remakes. I don't know why we haven't remade that movie. Um, but I know, whatever. I I shouldn't say that. I didn't say that, Internet. You didn't hear me. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't have a top three, says Evan Moskiver. Uh, but here are three. Enjoy. Uh, 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 Amelie, or uh, Emily, I think is what, how it's pronounced, uh, uh, which is made by, oh, who is the guy who we just saw make a movie that uh, made this movie, uh, Denali? Oh, goodness gracious. Um Paper Man and uh, and uh, Thorn uh, Thorn Sucker Thumb Sucker. I don't know these. Uh, I don't know these other two movies. I know Amelia though. Uh, but uh, oh, that director just made a movie, dude. Can you check it? Which Janelle? movie? Uh, which uh, movie did he make? Well, he made Amelia, which is a great flick. Actually, it's about this French girl. Uh, it's a pretty good movie, actually. Uh, but um, he he made a movie recently. God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Chester, what did you think of the Tokyo Game uh, Bethesda show uh, showed off? Uh, the Ghostwire. Um, uh, well, I saw a little bit of it here. To to be fair, I saw a little bit of it here before E3. Uh, as far as the Japanese talking about it, so I've actually have a little bit, uh, um, uh, a little bit of a heads up. I, uh, unfortunately, I was looking at E3 to give me some information about it, uh, and it didn't. Mm-hmm. I have no clue yeah. what the damn game is, right? And it's Jap- just, we just got a cutscene, which yeah, it tells us nothing. It doesn't, so, but because the Japanese were John, in, can't wait to uh, see it. But John Pierre, uh, Junette. Okay, and what was the movie he just made? just made um he hasn't made any movies recently the last movie was 2013 the young and the pretentious uh ts uh spitville mm, maybe it was a script writer it must have been a script writer uh but let script me continue writer. here uh everything is yeah. awesome eagle for right on uh eagle 43 says chester uh, i already saw that uh uh booster kiwi uh ancient japan was filled with black people where are you a bigot <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tokyo. Yeah, uh, Nintendo takes every E3. You know, you know why Eagle? Because they actually always show gameplay. I mean, this has been in the year of the cinematic, right? That's what E3 was, and they're great cinematics. I'm excited, but I mean, we want to see gameplay, right? Uh, and Nintendo yeah. does every year, dude. They always do. Uh, Doom Eternal is looking beautiful. Yes, it is. We did see a little bit of gameplay oh, with that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So let's see. I lost my body. Is that the one you're talking about? No, no. Uh, I it, it's I think, a uh, big flick, uh, actually. I think the business conference is the worst one I saw so far because they had oh. this massive focus on bloody mobile games and uh, and all sorts of crap. I didn't care about. Well, you know, and uh, uh, but I mean, it's hard to say whether it was Bethesda or e, uh, EA Play, but. Um, 
Um, I mm. think the thing that bugged me about Bethesda the most was just their damage, because there was a lot of damage control going on between EA and uh, Bethesda, of course. Uh, and it was just the nonsense. They kept pushing 76, and it's like, dude, the people don't want this game anymore. Move on, right? right. Uh, right. But the, they refused. Let it die. So. And he says, no, it's not D. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, uh, DOA. It's dead on arrival, uh, not dead. Uh, dead or alive? Huh? Oh, too bad. It was funny the way I put it, though. Uh, Jonette, yeah, Evan, you guys are smart. Uh, what did you guys think of Watch Dogs Three? Uh, uh, well, let me start going through it, and we talk about that. Uh, I actually uh, am more interested in Watch Dogs Three than I have been in the other any of the other stuff. Although. Uh, yeah. Legion, right? Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. But uh, although I have to say, because you know it's Ubisoft and it's the damn French, um, it's um, I didn't know this, and I mentioned this the other day to Bo- uh, to Booster, but uh, I didn't know that uh, in the near future, London is mainly populated by Black peoples. I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. Something. I like happened. to think that uh, this is the future where Sadiq Khan ruins London. It, uh. it, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, right, right. <laughs> Oh, uh, Evan Von Scavery said, we talk an old school, Maltese Falcon, Harvey, uh, and an affair to remember. The, yeah, those old school old, old movies are really good. I love the noir genre, actually. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who uh, uh, Razor Fist is uh, or his Rageaholic uh, yeah. show, but, uh, you know, Razor Fist, he can, he can be a bit much from here to there, but uh, depending on your, your, uh, uh, sensibilities, but um, uh, one, the dude is amazing, an amazing speaker. People say, wow, he's scripted. So what? So what? That dude is an, a r- ridiculous orator. He's really He's good. He's very orator. good at ranting. Yeah. It is good at uh, ranting and writing and uh, uh, orating. He is. Uh, but uh, one thing I really appreciate about Razor is uh, the fact that he loves film noir. He loves those old things. The Shadow is his favorite comic book. You know, that and Daredevil. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love Razor Fist, man. He's really cool. Hail the Detectives Club. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But if you haven't changed out, uh, check, check out, uh, uh, checked out the Rageaholic, uh, which is Rager Fist, I suggest you do understand uh, language warning. Uh, he swears a lot, but uh, just give him a chance and listen to him. He's impressive. You agree, it sounds like, Booster. Mm, he's naughty with his language, Chester. He is naughty, but but uh, I appreciate him, mm. and he's very smart. I know very little about Baldur's Gate 3, but... Uh... I know that it is being made by Larian Studios, who has a fantastic mm-hmm. track record. Mm-hmm. And Divinity Original Sin 2 is just one of the best damn RPGs I've ever played. So I yep. know they're going to do well by this yep. series. Uh, well, uh, I did watch the the uh, two creators. Uh, well, the the main the big boss from uh, 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 from uh, uh, DOS two, and uh, uh, I all they also had a representative from uh, D and D there. Uh, true nerd too, so it was a perfect choice. Uh, but. Uh, <clears throat> They talked about it quite a bit at what they're planning on doing, and uh, it sounds like it's it's a it's a love fest for Baldur's Gate and Dungeons and Dragons itself, which is exactly what we want. And Clarion Studios, they are absolutely awesome. So yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, Divinity Original Sin 2 is just a pen and paper game in in PC form. It plays yeah, no. just. Like a bloody uh, Dungeon yeah. and Dragons yeah. game. Yeah, a lot of people agree with that, that it is the best. Now, they did make some mentions that, because that, he, he said uh, the the boss at, uh, uh, over there, he said that uh, basically what they did was they took the, the player's handbook uh, from D&D, and they just basically took the book apart, and they went page to page, and they marked everything either green, orange, or red. Green, easy to do in the game. Orange, take some work. Red, no no way we can do it. Right. And uh, he went over what some of those uh, decisions for the green, the orange and the red were. I thought it was very, uh, very interesting because they're really trying their best to take the player's handbook and translate it into a video game. Uh, now, one of the mm-hmm. things he mentioned uh, with the uh, uh, DOS 2 uh, was that in that game, there's, it's classless, right? Uh, you can uh, you can make any 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 of the characters they present to you into anything you want, really. And of course, D and D is not like that, so they bring so there's going to be classes in the game. Uh, but <clears throat> that was a nice interview. You should guys go check it out. I saw that on Gamespot, uh, and uh, I know I know Gamespot has become an absolute pit of SJW despair. I understand that, but they still cover E3 really well, uh, and they'll show everything 
everything in his brother you can find on GameSpot. So you gotta you gotta take it with a, a a grain of salt, unfortunately. But um, like what was it? One of their commentators uh, they were waiting for the um, was it Bethesda? Who does uh, the Tomb Raider uh, run? Mm, what you mean, Crystal by map? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I think it was the Beth- Naughty the... Dogs. Yeah, well, but I think that was the Bethesda. They were expecting to see something in it in the Bethesda conference. Uh, but nevertheless, they had one of their yeah. commentator girls sitting there, and they were like, "Well, what are you looking forward to seeing?" And of course, they all waited for the female to speak first because you know how things are. And she says, "Well, all I really want to know is is Laura Croft gay? Are they going to let us know she's a lesbian? That's really what I want." And it's like, "This is video game show. What are you doing? Get the hell out of um, here!" Ridiculous. Right? Ridiculous, right? Because in truth, the Laura, Laura Croft uh, reboot with Tomb Raider seems to be pretty good, actually. So, you know, awesome, because we love Laura Croft, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Baldur's Gate, definitely on the top of my list of something I want to watch. I'm not going to run all these trailers because we don't have time, but uh, you go check them out yourself. But uh, there's not a lot of information. It's really early, and I'm kind of surprised they actually uh, showed it off so early. But uh, like Booster said, this company kicks butt, man. Danella, you have anything to say about Baldur's Gate? No, I enjoy Baldur, the original Baldur's Gate 2 uh, before. And um, I also like those D&D inspired games yeah. Um, yeah. like uh, The Reckoning. Mm-hmm. The, the, even though the company uh, went bankrupt and lost mm-hmm. everything, the, that game was still pretty good. Oh, sure, yeah. I love the Baldur's Gate series. The Neverwinter series as well was really good. Even the Neverwinter Online, the MMO, that's uh, that's still going. Yeah. It's not a bad game at all. Uh, and actually, Dungeons & Dragons Online, the original one, which is still going, by the way, uh, that was fun, too. That was pretty... And actually, those graphics have held up really well because they went with this, like, uh, artistically uh, shaded uh, type of uh, uh, style with that game, and it still looks beautiful, actually. Uh, even though it's how old now? More than a decade. That's a really old game. Uh, Close but, uh, to 20. <laughs> it's an old game, but it really it's a good yeah. game. Still a good game. Um, uh, and uh, Eagle 43 keeps mentioning about the Devolver Digital Press Conference. Devolver, uh, they if you just cut out all the nonsense and look at the games, yeah, it's cool. Uh, but uh, they try so hard to be a parody, to be funny, to uh, be edge lords and uh, against everything that is the, the comic book world, whether you like that or not. Uh, and they try too hard. I think they're kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you, in my opinion. But that aside, Devolver games are awesome. So, you know, I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, but uh, let me come down. What do you guys think about Devolver? Opinions. Well, I think they did Hotline Miami, right? I like, love Hotline Miami. Yeah, no, dude. I, I They do a lot of their games are really fun, especially their old school games, too, the style, right? It's a 2D side scrollers and, you know, that kind of thing. And they do it really well. I just think their Into conference the is, yeah. is, is kind of desperate, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I forgot. They picked up a game series that they're going to do now. I forgot what series they were going to do. Uh. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God, Bob. All right, fine. We're we're going to be late. Yeah. We're, we're, it's going to take us time to get to this uh, movie today. Damn it! What do you think um, of the shim? All right, oh, you you easy, want to start, Denali? Go ahead. E- easy thing. They're pieces of shit. Thing. Yeah. They suck. Ding. And I'm not ever going to support them ever I think again. This I deserves care. yes. I think this deserves quite a few things. Yeah, it does deserve it, and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Should I give my opinion? I'm going to get yelled at. Um, all Just right. do your opinion. Just go. All right. This is go. my thing, dude. Um, There's no dings involved. This for, is a dings free the, zone for today. All right. Fine. <clears throat> this is the thing I have to say about Shenmue uh, 3. Uh, first of all, um, uh, everyone getting uh, uh, really upset about the fact that they went uh, away from stream at the last second uh, over to Epic Game Store because of huge amounts of money. Um, uh, it is, it, it, it doesn't, I don't, unless I don't know, unless there's something about the Epic store, I don't know. Like for instance, steam is free. I don't know. I don't have Epic. Do I have to pay extra for Epic? I don't think so. I think it's basically a direct uh, competitor stream. Someone tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but, um, it, it's not that big a deal. I understand the 
principle of the situation. I get that. I do 100% get that. Uh, and I don't disagree with anyone who's asking for refunds and are not allowed to get refunds because of Japanese law, actually. Uh, but um, I, that side of the controversy is less interesting to me, although I do understand people's anger. For me, the biggest controversy is the game looks like shit. It, <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. I we I played Shenmue, uh, 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 Shenmue 2, what? 15, 16 years ago, God, forever ago. And that game, right. this game looks hardly any better than that. And we know what you can do. Has anyone seen Ghost of Ch uh, uh, Tsushima or uh, the new Doom Eternal? Have we seen the graphics that are available today? And that's yeah. the crap you give out for $6 million crowdfunded? Really? Really? That's the controversy for me. And no one's talking about that. Everyone's talking about this uh, Epic Game Store nonsense, which is bullshit. I get it. 100% I understand. Uh, but that's not the controversy, dude. The controversy is it looks like crap, dude. And that is a, that is an insult. Uh, uh, I mean, the Booster. Mm. I mean, come on. You must have an opinion on this. Oh, I don't care about you, man. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But I get I'm it. I'm glad I didn't back it. I'm glad I didn't back it. But no, it is crap that um they pr essentially promised everyone that they're going to get a copy, right? Then Epic comes along and is like, hey, how about you come with us instead? They're like, okay, Ru. And then they don't give out the place Steam keys out. That well, were they, promised. Well, that's true. And they said very clearly, we were given enough money between the company and uh, Epic uh, that uh, we could refund everything and it doesn't matter. Right, and then they turn around and said there will be no, uh, there will be no refunds. Period. Right. That's a stubborn move. Right. Yeah. It is, and it's going to hurt them hard. And the thing is that I don't understand exactly what the the whole uh, uh, hubba baloo is about uh, the Epic uh, Gaming Store. I don't really, um, uh, because it seems like it's just a competitor to Steam. But because they're buying well, out so many IPs, I think is what p is pissing people off. But someone explain to me what is the deal with Epic and why does everybody hate it? Please help me out. Hey, Candy. <laughs> All right. The reason that people are hating on Epic is because oh. they're taking away exclusives from Steam, and people like having all of their uh, games bundled up on Steam. But it's kind of strange, though. You know, on one, on one stage, we're complaining about Steam having the monopoly on the PC gaming scene. Right. Next thing you know, Epic tries to shape things up. Now people are pissed at them. It's, it's a little bit strange, but... I can, I can understand people just wanting all their games on bloody Steam. Well, it comes out of DRM, right? I mean mm, that's the mm -hmm. issue, right? Because you can't, you have to, you have to run it on the Steam la la launcher, right? Or the Nexon launcher, or the uh, Origin launcher, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how many damn launchers do I have on my freaking desktop, right? And, and I know there's, uh, you got GOG, G O G, uh, that is trying to uh, organize everything uh, on your desktop so you can have one launcher to deal with it all. They're trying to do that, but I don't know how successful they're going to be with it. Uh, so if, if this is just the issue of another uh, uh, DRM launcher, I, I get it. I do get that. But uh, it, it seems a bit odd well, to me, uh, the situation. Well, part of it is that Epic Store isn't available in some countries. Second, I think ah. because, yeah, some, it's part of it also is because the I think the cut between Epic Store um, developer gets less money with them mm -hmm. um, in, over the long run, so the developer are hurting themselves and cutting and they're cutting their um, they're getting short term profits oh. over you know long term gains, which is yeah, and that's so why people the so the lie the low IQ choice of uh, short term games. I get it. Yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had this happen to me, too, though, uh, because I pre-ordered, uh, which I don't do. It's very rare for me to pre-order anything. But I did. And, I, and, and in all honesty, if we look at things logistically, I would suggest that none of us pre-order anything. It's probably not a good yeah. idea. Uh, but I did pre-order because I trust the company emphatically. I did uh, pre-order Anno 1800. And, uh, of course, I pre-ordered it on Steam. And then Epic bought it and became an Epic exclusive, but they allowed my Steam key to be to work. So I, I do have Anno, and it is on Steam. Right. So but I mean, what, what's this, the problem? But in, the, but in this case, they're not they're not going to let you use your Steam key. Yeah. See, that's stupid. Have, 
yeah, you're going to have to use the Epic Store thing to do this. That's the other reason. Yeah. You can't no. refund it and you got to use their store to get it. Yeah, and and you know, Combo Bog makes a perfect point. Shenmue 3 looks like a ported remastered Dreamcast game. It does, dude. It looks like it's exactly what it looks like. I mean, it actually has the same problem we had two decades ago where at the elbows and at the knees, the arms got really thin and wonky looking because they couldn't render that motion well, right? Which I understand. Yeah. But these days, I mean, we have rendered things beautifully and perfectly. And if I, if I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I do understand that the Shenmue 3 was built in Unreal 4. And it's like, ha? Huh? How? Yeah. How? What? You know, you know what Being, I think it is. The the the, the creator they're, they're, was from mm-hmm. way back, way back, old time creator, and he made some yeah. fun little two D games. Uh, and he just doesn't have the skill or ability to do a modern game. And instead of being smart and just hiring devs who can, he probably did it himself with his own crew. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what he did. And it's unfortunate. Uh, uh, boy, we haven't got very far in this article at all. Uh, nope. <laughs> Destiny 2, does anybody care? No. Shadow, Shadow Keep, nope. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order, hmm. Booster, why don't you start with this one, man? Uh, so this is like about the Order 66 thing, I suppose, right? Yep. And yep. it's in the hands of EA. Don't care, skip. Yep. Well... Well, I'm not going to mm-hmm. I'm not going to throw it under the boat uh, under the uh, 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 the bus so quickly. This is from Respawn, dude. It is. Now, I know we used to be able to say, "Hey, it's from BioWare." And BioWare has absolutely fall fallen, right? Right. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, Respawn hasn't yet, dude. Um and uh, That's the key word, yet. Yet. I mean, I understand it's EA, but I mean, it is Respawn. Um but um and it's weird, yeah. you know, we talk about comic books a lot, but we seem to know a lot about video games, dude. Interesting. We do. Well, uh, they go do. hand in hand most I of the guess, time. I guess they do. Uh, but the, the thing I say about uh, Jedi Fallen Order, uh, listening to them talk about it, especially when they were at the later uh, interview, which they're more relaxed because they were very nervous at that uh, EA Play thing. Uh, but uh, the thing I'd say is I don't know why they showed the game to us yet because it's obviously not finished. I don't even think this is free alpha, right? Uh, that's <laughs> I'm really pretty sure the they're issue. Con- I'm pretty sure there's some contract obligation they have to fulfill ea with the exclusivity of disney and they had to show it or else they would lose the exclusivity or you know or they would have to pay disney back for that exclusivity and ea it's not paying anybody back true but keep in mind they made it very clear there are no loot boxes in this game none uh yet well, uh, it's a single-player game, so I don't really know how they're going to get around that anyway. It's not surprising that when uh, saying that there are no loot boxes gets a bloody clap from the audience. What a know, sad dude. set of affair video games is in. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, uh, thank you for not screwing us over. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 But 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 then again, one of the one of the uh, most cringy moments, and there are always cringy moments at E3. I mean, video gamers. We talked about this the other day. They have some. It's one of the biggest media uh, markets in the entire world, but they don't bother to hire any actual you know uh, presenters or actors who can do the job. One of the cringiest damn moments of this whole thing was during the uh, Bethesda when they were talking about uh, uh, you know um, Fallout 76, and the guy said, "We have Battle Royale." In a Fallout game, dude. <laughs> what? And he was so oh, excited too. He was all, "I've been waiting royal. all week to say it. I've been waiting." And I was like, "Dude, <laughs> you bastards!" Oh, yeah. freaking Bethesda. And man. then, and then everybody got paid to say, "Hey guys, when when he's talking, cheer no matter what and try to get a standing ovation." And nobody, nobody bit. <sighs> nobody bit it. Yeah, well, they look like idiots. It's like, yeah, okay, we're going to sit down. Well, I'm I'm going to reserve my opinion on this because it's obviously not even close to being talked about. They just, Denali's probably right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to wait and see. But uh, because Respawn, uh, until they screw up, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to take them uh, based upon what they've done. So I'm going to wait on that. This one right here, though. Uh, now, this is being made by the dudes uh, who made Fallout, uh, actually. Yeah. Um, and uh, who got screwed over by uh, Bethesda right. and ended up leaving. And then uh, uh, yeah. later here, they have created their own Fallout called The Outer Worlds. Uh, you guys excited right. about this? 
Yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's. it's I don't know too much about it, but it looks. Cool. I mean, I mean, it's them, and but you know them. It's they're mm-hmm. good. They they have good and bad games, and I haven't. Obsidian, decided. yeah, they do. You're right, uh, but uh, Fallout New Vegas was a great game. Uh, it right. was. And uh, it is really, uh, really unfortunate what uh, happened with these guys of Bethesda, I think. Uh, uh, but um, here we are. Uh, they put this game out. Unfortunately, it's following the trend these days of super colorful. Yay. Uh, okay, fine. That not, um, uh, but uh, I don't Would know. Would you rather have the 2009 era of nothing but brown and gray? No. Yeah. No, definitely I'll no. take this over there any day. Any day. Yes, yeah. I agree. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but, um, the Gears of Wars, the Modern Warfare, the Borderlands. Woo! Hey, you know, Gears looks really good right now, dude. Uh, even though it's, uh, I mean, unfortunately, it has been infected by the SJW nonsense because uh, this, uh, the main character is the lady that they introduced in the last one, uh, Gears 4. Uh, and, uh, uh, but it's all about her personal journey to self-awareness and understanding. It's a Gears game. We shoot and kill demon thingies. We don't care about her personal freaking journey. Maybe her personal journey is realizing, I shouldn't be doing this. But it's so stupid. I mean, how many of you guys play the original Gears? I mean, raise your hand. Yep. Everybody raise your hand. Okay. Okay, we raise your hand. Now, why do we like the original Gears? We had big, chunky right. guys with guns shooting monster demon thingies, and it had it was the first one I remember where you could actually uh, click the button and hide down b- uh, uh, below cover. Ooh, ooh, it, was, ooh. it was the there first was cover game. game before that. It was called Kill Switch. That was the game that ah, introduced Kill it. Switch. No, you're right. No, you mm. are right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I re- that's one of the things I remember being a big deal with Gears, right? And now we've come to the point that we're following Thumb Lady. Gears will definitely popularized it. Yeah, no, maybe, yeah. Yeah, no, I mm. remember mm. Kill Switch, dude. I do. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, it's really, I mean, come on, dude. Come on. Uh, but the game <laughs> looks beautiful, though. Uh, Outer Worlds, I guess everyone's uh, taking a, a hold on this. Now, I saw this. Uh, this was at Bethesda, I think. I'm pretty sure this was. Oh, no, it was Microsoft. It was Microsoft. Um, and the Bleeding mm-hmm. Edge game, uh, it's another another attempt to go at um, uh, to go at the uh, Overwatch uh, uh, game, right. just like uh, the uh, Apex uh, Legends. Uh, and, it, boy, talk about not even being a little bit interested at all. It looks like it's trying way too hard. You can see just yeah. from that little clip thing there. Yeah, no, just I'm back. not even interested. Honestly, I don't uh, play those kind of games. I played Team Fortress. Uh, Fortress, um, what was it, Team Fortress? Was mm-hmm. that the, that was mm-hmm. the name of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember playing that and had fun with it. And then, of course, Overwatch came over and took the world over in, in that genre. And I played Overwatch uh, with uh, you and uh, Pope and uh, uh, some of the guys, and it was fun. Uh, it's not my favorite kind of game, but uh, I certainly don't need dozens of this type of game. Overwatch is enough, you know, even though every everyone and their brother is gay. So it's like, yay, the world is gay. Uh, but, everyone uh, gets to be gay. It was written by J.K. Bloody Rolling. Yeah, right. Uh, but this one's a little different because this is melee instead of uh, ranged combat. Uh, but uh, oh. I I wasn't interested. Yeah, and I still not interested. Uh, let's see. He uh, Evan Mark Skyver says I keep forgetting about Evil Rick. Uh, he can be the uh, Kaiser Soze kingpin. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I'm missing something. Uh, that uh, came. Uh, it, it, it. It. What made me suspicious? Carrying a cane in broad daylight. Oh, that guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, because those men uh, veers the locus. Uh, yeah. Well, that's game, uh, gears, right? Uh, but it was just fun, right? Rogers. Uh, it's asking. I guess nobody likes seven 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 coming back. Uh, dude, would, they're dude. episodic. They're they're would episodic. You? Yeah, we're oh, gonna get, we we're gotta get to that. I we're have gonna, opinions on that. We're gonna get to it. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to be watching a movie today, actually. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that's all right. That's all right. Uh, it, it, we, we'll just do this and have fun with it. Uh, Ori and the Will-O-Wisp. We've been seeing this for a couple years now, uh, and uh, it looks beautiful. Yeah. It's it's uh, A lot of mm-hmm. these games are taking this kind of style uh, and trying to throw it down our throats, but that trailer was uh, that they showed, the cinematic and the gameplay they showed to, uh, uh, the other day, was beautiful. Are you familiar with Ori and the Blind Forest? Uh, I am familiar with Ori. I've been watching it all along. I haven't played it, though. 
I haven't played it either, but those games are stunningly beautiful. They it's are. just what the indie guys do best as platform games. Yep, it is. And it's a beautiful take on it as well. Uh, so yeah. uh, maybe we need to, maybe I need to try it out, is what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I built on my wish list for the uh, Switch. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, and the Switch is kicking butt at E3, dude. Yeah, the Switch is also a bloody indie darling, man. Uh, yeah, all of is. the great indie games are on it. Yeah, but it can run everything. They have The Witcher yep. on that, and it can run it. Yep. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I mean, rock on, Nintendo, man. Um, great bloody system. Now. Uh, this one right here, Minecraft Dungeons. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to just the only comment I'm going to make is first, I've never played Minecraft because it's ugly. What do I want this blocky Lego thing? Uh, if I want to play with Legos, I'll play with them in real life. But that's not my generation. The kids love it. is one of the biggest hits of all time, really. Uh, so rock mm. on, you know, good on, for, good, good for them. But Minecraft Dungeons. Dude, if I want to play that kind of game, I'll go play Diab- uh, Diablo, or I'll go play yeah. any of the other you know, million ripoffs of Diablo, right? Why would I want to play this thing? I don't get it. It's so strange. Unless they're uh, adding some kind of building system to it mm-hmm. that works in some kind of way, I don't see the point. No. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. And what is that MMO? Uh, it started as an MMO, but it's basically a uh, MMO Di- a Diablo. Damn it, it's... Um, Oh, you mean that Maple Story game? No, 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 no. Uh, this one's very bloody and very dark. Um, mm. Oh, damn it, man! I played it in the beginning, and I played it through Path a very. It's very, huh? Path of Exile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I played that game when it very first came out, and it was very much an MMO. Uh, and then it became more and more Diablo-like, and I think it was a smart move. Uh, but I mean, if I'm going to play anything, I'm going to go play that. Why would I play this? It doesn't make any sense. All right. Do- that was made in New Zealand. Oh, there you go. Denali, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't like Minecraft, so I'll pass. Mm. Yeah. No, okay. Now, this one, uh, the trailer and the game, and they showed some gameplay with this in the Microsoft thing. Um, uh, this one, I didn't know one saw coming. This is actually one of the few things that didn't seem to get leaked. Uh, the Blair Witch. Uh, what would you guys think about that? I thought I was looking at some weird either Resident Evil or Silent Hill thing, and I was like, ooh, this could be interesting. And then all of a sudden, Blair Witch. I was like, ooh, it's interesting. Yeah. These just aren't my kind of games, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're not for me. I can understand the appeal to them, absolutely. But, you know, uh, games like Outlast and Amnesia were making uh, waves, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of cool because for the longest time, the AAA guys were saying, no one wants her horror games anymore. And Amnesia and Outlast just blew that notion out of the water. So, <laughs> good on them. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, I went over to a stream and was watching Booster uh, play and complete the new Resident Evil game, by the way. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we gave him a lot of uh, flack just because we're because we love him. Uh, but uh, actually, Booster is a pretty good gamer, dude. He he was playing through what? That was epic hard, dude. You were playing yeah, it, was, it was on the hardcore hardcore mode. I only had limited bloody saves. <laughs> I had limited everything. Zombies were one hitting the crap out of me. Sure. Yeah, uh, but at the end of it, they were giving away a Steam key uh, for the game, and uh, whoever had closest to how many times the booster die, I think I voted sixty-three, uh, was the number you I voted threw like out. forty-seven. You're about twenty away. You were the third closest, but you got it because the other two were like, I don't bloody want it. <laughs> but I actually tried it out. Uh, I haven't got too far in it, but uh, it is not a bad Resident Evil game. Actually, it's pretty it's actually, good. It's a really good game. It's yeah. really pretty good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, Combo Bob says he's interested in this game. Uh, it, it, it was a surpriser, actually. And uh, I don't know. I like horror movie, uh, horror type of games, move, man. Uh, I mean, um, I love the Silent Hill series. I'm not a big mm. Resident Evil fan. Uh, my kids like it though. Uh, but um, I did, I did love um, Silent Hill. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah. Here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. Yep. Totally in. Didn't All right, pre order this. I already pre-ordered this. He's yeah. already pre-ordered it. Wow, my man. I uh, I'm usually against the idea of pre-ordering ever, but yeah. this is CD Projekt Red. These guys have yes. one of the best track records in any company mm-hmm. ever. Yeah, well, uh, and the game is looking strong as hell. We got that excellent 40-minute uh, gameplay demo last year, so yeah. they got away with just cinematic this time, right? They, yeah, they did, and, and wait they're... even more with with us with um the release date but there was a lot of information with the cinematic as well 
Hmm? Then they get Keanu Bloody Reeves. Yeah. yeah, no, that was a smart move. And he's in the game, and he's a major part of the game, too, uh, But um, which is totally cool. And they kept that secret, man. That's pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, that's um, incredible. It is. And and here, we've talked about this before, right? Uh, le- uh, leaking. What you see a lot of leaking come out of companies that are having troubles, where people are not happy. When people are happy, we don't see leaks. Marvel uh, Studios is a perfect example. For all those movies, we saw basically hardly any leaking at all until we came to Captain Marvel, and then it leaked like a sieve, right? And it really shows you when the people are not happy, this is when they start leaking stuff because they're angsty. And uh, this is a major leak because, honestly, I don't know if there's any Hollywood actor right now who is more beloved than Keanu Reeves. I really don't. Now, he's not the best he actor there, but everyone loves him, right? And uh, and he's getting major hate from the feminists. The feminists just can't stand him. I didn't even know that, dude. I was like, how can you hate Keanu Reeves? But it's they hate him. Because men like him. All right. So they have women like him, too. Him and hate him. Yeah. Uh. But, you know the funny thing about all this noise we hear every damn day? You do realize in the Western world, uh, 91.7% of all women do not want to be referred to as feminist. 91.7%. So that means that 8.3% of women are feminist, or at least claim to be. Mm. And then you have to look at the percentage of them that actually are the these absolute psychotic nightmares uh, that is the SJW identity politics. So it's showing you exactly how destructive a small percentage of people can be. Just like in America, if you break it down to the young uh, men who are causing all the trouble, 4% of America is causing 51% of the crime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A small squeaky group. will, just a squeaky Dude. will. But I'm serious. It's a serious issue. Small percentages of people can cause ridiculous levels of trouble, man. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a, uh, and I still can't get over that. Four percent of um, the American population is causing fifty-one percent of the crime, all crime. And it, it, it's how is that possible, dude? It tells you something. Something. It tells you something. Uh, but the it's same thing seems to be true for the uh, SJWs. Anyway, it's the uh, and you know some people are Nick are arguing it's not third wave feminism, right? It's fourth wave. It's gone beyond that. Uh, but anyway, yeah. they're going after him because of the gun use in John Wick in this game now. Yeah, it sounds like it, but it's like why? Mm-hmm. Keanu's awesome, dude. You guys suck. Uh, this is going to be their downfall. You keep attacking Keanu. You go at it because it's going to be your downfall. It's going to be. Right? And he can't pin mm-hmm. anything because he doesn't touch anybody. No, he doesn't even a, touch the ladies. He's a, he, ain't, he ain't playing with that. He ain't risking that. No, he ain't. He And he has his own private life. Uh, but um, uh, besides that nonsense, um, this game looks awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it is an FPS, which is not my... It's my least favorite genre, uh, but it looks great. I played the pen and paper when I was younger, so I have a, I have a nostalgic attachment to it. Uh, but um, yeah, this game is what? awesome. And CD Projekt Red, dude. Yeah, what's awesome about it is that when they release it, they're going to release the uh, second edition Cyberpunk 2020 uh, as an add-on. So oh, really? Can play the, yeah, so oh, people awesome. that haven't haven't played the tabletop version can play that tabletop version as well. Yeah. I'd oh, love well. to see that. Um, I'd actually like to see an art update in it because it, it has that kind of uh, 80s image of what punk was. Uh, unfortunately, well, Chester, you may be interested for uh, Cyberpunk Red, which is a new edition that they're working on right now. I'm sure I would be. Uh, I do love uh, 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 role playing games. And of course, Cyberpunk mm-hmm. was a great, it was a fun game. It was another different game. Uh, the difference with it, whereas we were, we were playing a vampire and we did Marvel uh, to demonstrate different types of uh, uh, role playing games, uh, that the thing that was different about Cyberpunk was the class development in the game, actually. Uh, that right. was the interesting aspect of it, not the mechanics, the dice rolling and stuff like that, as with uh, Vampire or uh, Marvel. Uh, but um, but yeah, that's a t- conversation and the, and for the, another day. And, but, uh, and the combat system where you die quickly if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Absolutely, dude. Uh, that was one of the most deadly games you could play. That and uh, Shadowrun was pretty deadly, too. Uh, mm-hmm. But Roger Heller says, uh, to me, Cyberpunk uh, 2077 looks like what the new Prey game that got scrapped. Yeah, it's interesting. They did come up with a game named Prey, but it has no connect. It doesn't seem to have any connection to the one they that got scrapped. Uh, the one that got scrapped looked gorgeous in his cinematics, but uh, we're never going to see that. So, 
Mm. Yeah. Wow, we know a lot about video games, dude. I didn't know that. We should do we more do. video game stuff. Um, we, we, uh, can do, we can do that. We, we could do easily that. do that. Yeah. Mean, the knowledge here is pretty deep, actually. Um, uh, Dying yeah. Light 2. Hmm. I didn't play the first one, but uh, I'm not big into zombie games. I think that first-person parkour is a terrible mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think person, it works yeah. well at all. Yeah. 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 Now, not we my were, game, <laughs> so I'm not interested in it. Now, anymore. we were talking about Infamous, though, Booster, and uh, that has yeah. parkour in it, but it's over-the-shoulder third person, and it's one of my exactly. favorite modes. I love that game. Absolutely. Uh, parkour with third person works so much better, considering that um, you can see your environment a lot more better. You get a much better perspective. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. first person, you don't know if uh, you're about to go down a bloody pitfall. There's going to be a platform there for you half the time. It's, it's not yeah. good. Yeah, I don't like first person. I I hate if I don't hate it. I really don't like FPS. Um, uh, but then again, it is the largest genre right now. I think though. So I mean, it's all right. a lot of people love it. Uh, but I think one of the reasons I'm not big on the first person are the things you said, but also the fact that I'm just not a great FPS shooter. I'm. I mean, when I play those games, I'm always like in the uh, 50 to 60 percentile, right? I mean, I'm just me. I'm uh, mediocre at best, right? Uh, yeah. So I'm just not great at them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Only good for first person parkour is Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, remember you Burger know. Time? That was great. Yeah, Burger Time was a fun game, dude. Yeah. Um uh interesting. Uh, uh yes, yeah, that's right, Eagle. Uh the one where you're supposed to be a bounty hunter. Yeah, it's a really good you can still go find the trailer. Uh and then the new prey game they came out with, like I said, I don't think it has any relation to it. Uh but anyway, moving on. Oh, we get to change a page. Yeah, we're definitely not watching a movie today, huh? Oh, well. Nope. Yeah. Done. Oh. <laughs> I thought I posted the link. <laughs> yeah, Bob, just stop. Yeah. And you uh, guys can... Bob ch- says, I don't think a combination of free running and survival horror is a good mix. And Eagle43 says, Assassin's Creed turned into a mistake after the first one when uh, it went down with the story. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, uh, but, you know, Assassin's Creed does have a lot of fans. I, I, I'm not a big fan of Assassin's Creed, but uh, oh, I like I the story. I pumping those games out, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I, I got sick of it. Okay, now, um, uh, I, haven't, I haven't played any of these trailers, but I'm really tempted to play this one. Should I do it? <laughs> Should I do it? I'm yeah. doing it. It's Push done. It's happening. It's All happening. Right. Fine. It's... Iron Toads. I need Battle Toads. We're back. I love the art style. Good old 80s uh, heavy metal, glam rock. Explosive free player. That's a that's a very strange number. We've been seeing odd numbers recently. Two and three player. Uh, the um, Gears has three player mode, right? It's so strange. It's usually like two or four players. It never been a free player. Okay. <laughs> that bloody level, huh? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Play it with Xbox Game Pass. Okay, Battle thank Toad. you, Xbox. This is the game. Uh, <laughs> Battletoads, finally. Uh, uh, this, of course, is a very popular game from the, the distant past. Uh, but uh, it looks great, man. It looks great. And that was all, that was pretty, that was all gameplay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what do you guys mm-hmm. think? Is, am I just simply the old guy who's uh, thinking nostalgic, or does it look cool? Yes. Well, Comic Book Bob <laughs> hates it. Comic Book Bob hates it. Uh, what's a Mirror's Edge fan either? Either I see, I see. Uh, oh God, Battle Toads looks like complete crap. I thought it looked cool, dude. I like the artistic <laughs> style they went with it. I think it's fun. No. All right, I'm the only one. Okay, I'm alone. You're the other. All You're right, the other fine. One. I'm sorry, just yeah. the... fine. Uh, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, they made this. Uh, this was actually fairly prominent in the Microsoft uh, press conference. Uh, uh, yeah. Skip. It's, okay, fine. It's okay. games that my dad and uncle would like. 
Yeah, no, yeah, right, right. I mean, there, there's a market for it for sure. Age of Empires Two, Definitive Edition. This is a remake, right? A remastering, yeah. they call it. Yeah. Yeah, the high definition. It doesn't look that great. Actually, I didn't think it was that that the much improved. I actually yeah. thought the uh, final. Oh. Fa- I thought the Final Fantasy VIII remastering looked a lot better than this one, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eight? Are you yeah, sure? Yeah, eight. I don't think yeah. they came out. I was, I was, no, they didn't do eight. Yeah, they did. Yeah, no, they, yeah, they, they did. did. Yeah. Remastered, yeah, yeah. So they did not. It's, it's not like remade. It's HD, remastered. It's uh, bump up, right? Yeah, you know, clean no, up some things. It's not like a full remake, like seven. No, it's Denali. a remaster. They, no, yeah. no. I'm. That's what I'm saying. They can't remaster eight because they don't have the files. They lost all those files. Well, that's why you don't see it. eight. They announced mm-hmm. it. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what to say. Uh, but um, now they this. They pulled up, pulled one of this house and ripped the coding from there. Now. That's going to be. Yeah. Now I don't know if you guys have been noticing here, but uh, as we've been going through this page uh, and yeah. looking at stuff uh, with Microsoft, mm-hmm. they have the rainbow pride is in effect. Is in the rainbow. Let's okay. not call it out. I was purposely ignoring it. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, like Oprah guy. Super gay. Um, anyway, uh, uh, I'd be down with an eight remake too, though. They did. They they have done it, and I thought it looked better than the uh, uh, Age of Empires. Uh, but this one right here, Wasteland Three. Uh, people have been waiting for this game for a long time. Uh, it's not uh, quite as long as the. Um, oh damn it! Uh, what is the game that everyone wants that'll never be remake? Uh, uh, have a sequel uh, similar to uh, Wasteland and uh, Fallout. Um, oh my brain! Damn it! <sighs> anyway, similar uh, to Fallout in Wasteland, I thought wait, I thought that was Wasteland. No, there's another game because... that's been that people have been waiting forever, and they're not going to get it. Um, uh, but anyway, it's okay. Uh, that doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, Wasteland Three. Uh, people have been mm-hmm. waiting for quite a while, uh, and uh, they're I think they're going to be happy. It looked cool. Um, and a lot of people uh, uh, prefer Wasteland over Fallout, to be honest with you, even though Fallout gets the bigger press. Uh, me, personally, I think I agree, I, although I don't know. Fallout 3 was a really good game, uh, yeah. and, and, and New Vegas was good, too. Mm-hmm. Why can't I remember that game? It's, it's pissing me off. Anyway, uh, no comments <laughs> on Wasteland, I guess. Nothing from you guys? No, I- no, not really. I don't know much about it. All right. Psychonauts 2. That for Psychonauts was a very popular one, the first game. Uh, people are looking forward to the second one here. Uh, I thought it looked like a fine trailer. And the uh, Psychonaut uh, uh, kid actually is in the uh, uh, organization now. Uh, so that's, yeah. uh, if you're into that, I think uh, you'll be happy. It seems like a nice continuation. Um, yeah, cool. I don't really trust Tim Schafer these days, but yeah. No, nah, it's not Stalker Eagle 43. It's... Um, it's it's a like a legendary game that everyone's been begging forever, and it's not going to happen. Uh, Fallout Three and New Vegas were great, yeah, they were, Bob. Uh, I mean, I played hours and hours. Well, what of that. was the studio that made it? Then uh, it's it, the 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 owner of the studio and the boss of the studio is an absolute jackass. Um, he's true, a true jackass. Um, someone's right. got to help me. Someone's got to know here. Uh, I know. But what's the name of the I studio? I don't work? remember. My brain has got a complete blank on it. Being it's probably because that guy pisses me off so much. Uh, but so who's the owner? I, the, the, I have blocked it from my mind. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. but uh, no, I played hours of Fallout, dude. Uh, three and uh, another game from Bethesda that I played a ton of was Oblivion. Man. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's you know, not no Mer- no Morrowind. Uh, Morrowind too. I've played a lot, hell out of that on my Xbox, the original yeah. Xbox. Uh, but unlike everyone else in the world, I thought uh, Elder Scroll was a bit of a step down, actually. Hmm. Tim Schafer. Is it Tim Schafer? I don't yeah. know. Whatever. whatever. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, this looks fun. Yeah. Uh, it's taking the entire saga, all nine movies, and putting them together. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, next. Uh, Gears 5. We already talked about it. We talked uh, about it. It looks yeah. beautiful. It is way super woke. Just understand that. But it does have a, a really strong uh, looking co op mode. So, a three person co op mode. So, uh, Oblivion mm-hmm. was great. Yeah. Uh, Fonza, uh, uh, Forza, sorry. What? Forza Horizon. 
uh, Horizon. Uh, Horizon. Yeah. Yeah. They I go to speak. I know. I don't care. Oh no! You know they're doing bad when they're introducing stuff like this. Oh. Because they only came out last year. So if they're introducing something wild like this, yeah. Well, I have to. Doing good. You got to give them two points though. They get they get two things from me. One, it started out like a nor- normal Forza uh, trailer, and the and, yeah. and the the beautiful car stops, and then you see these weird Lego things coming at you, and as they get closer, everything is awesome. It started playing right, oh, and no. then right. it was fun. It was funny though. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the Lego version of this car that we see right here was on stage, actually built with Legos. So they That's get crazy. They get it. They get two two checks for me from that. Uh, I'm not a big racing game guy. Actually, my favorite racing game of all time is probably weird, but it was called Apex. Uh, and you could actually build your own uh, garage, build your own cars. You could build up your business over time. It was a it was a racing RPG, really. Uh, and hmm. uh, and it was a great racing mechanics as well. I loved Apex, uh, but. Hmm. Um, you know, I'm not. I love uh, racing games with weird little mechanics like Wipeout, Crash Team Racing, and Mario Kart. Oh, Those I are see. kind of racing yeah. games I love. Yeah. Well, the, I racing, think not the only it. thing disappointing with uh, the Horizon series has been from the first one is that they removed kind of like the little elements that I enjoy, like the rival drivers and the little storylines, because then they m- made some generic changes where they made everything kind of generic and it was like uh yeah. as much as i like like driving the countryside and whatever special exotic location i really like those other touches from the original horizons um uh, horizon games I see. And Bullet saying uh, the Hot Wheels uh, expansion for uh, Forza uh, was great. <clears throat> uh, don't let this fool you. I'm not, dude. I think Forza does a wonderful job. And if uh, Lego is popular and everyone's liking Lego and they want to put that in for uh, some fun, I don't have any problem with that at all. <clears throat> it's part of this uh, this trend we see these days, of everything being colorful. I think it has to be super colorful, right? Uh, it's no, part it's of like that. It's like the 70s. I guess, right? Uh, but there were better drugs then. Uh, anyway, um, but um, <laughs> uh, one thing I would mention is my kids played a lot of Mario Kart. And uh, 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 But uh, uh, just as a sideline, uh, my son uh, actually played Splatoon, the original Splatoon. Uh, they played it a lot. Yeah. And his team were all local boys. And uh, one of their team members was the number one Splatoon player in the world. And his team that he was part of with his friends was the number one Splatoon team uh, as far as worldwide. And I thought that was kind of cool that this little teeny fishing village had the number one Splatoon team in the world. So I don't, know the, you know, I don't know if it means anything. I've actually but... been playing uh, Splatoon 2. It's really mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Hmm. But mainly, my, my my son was a uh, really good player, but he said mainly they were there because of that one kid uh, who was just, just ridiculously good at it. So they, he, he kind of carried the team, but, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. But they worked hard. Those kids put a lot of time into those games, man. So anyway, moving on. Uh, Borderlands 3. Ah, see, I didn't never like Borderlands. Uh, but this it's, is uh, a this manic. Is my game. A... Yeah, go for it. You talk about it. Neat. These are my games, man. I played uh, a crap ton of Borderlands way back. Uh, probably well over 200 hours of that. Borderlands 2 came out. I played that crap out of that for years. I love RPG elements in games. I love uh, loot, right? I, I love uh, mint maxing the crap out of characters and finding out all sorts of new different weird builds. Yeah, these are my games, bro. And mm-hmm. this is looking great. But there is a big thing behind the background of Randy Pitchford and Epic and all sorts of this weird nonsense that's going on that is really, really got me concerned. Um, yeah. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, I know that Randy Pitchford is a psychopath. Have you seen him uh, spurg out on Twitter? Uh, no, I don't pay much attention to Twitter at all, dude. Oh, good, oh, good, good. That he's, they keep it that way. He's just... Uh, screaming at customers. He's apparently uh, abusing his own staff uh, to the point where they were considering re- releasing the game on Pirate Bay. That's what they wow. were threatening that with. Yeah. Gearbox is having that kind of trouble. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I-, I played uh, Borderlands 2. I didn't play the first one. It was all mm-hmm. right. 
it was all right. It's just if I'm going to play a post uh, post post apocalyptic game, um, I would rather play Fallout Three or Wasteland. That's Fair all. Enough. That's all. I don't hate the game. I just did. I just never really caught on to it. Uh, but uh, it is supremely popular. So you know, rock on, dude. I think it was also the uh, the the artistic style. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this uh, cell shading type of thing. I'm not a huge fan. Although there are some beautiful games coming out that are cell shaded that I have to say look wonderful. Uh, no, um, uh, yeah, we're definitely not watching a movie today, Denali, because uh, we get a lot to talk about. <laughs> my brain is full on e, uh, E3 <laughs> mode, and I have a lot of games in my head that I haven't seen yet. Uh, Elden Ring, yep. we didn't see much. We saw a great trailer. Uh, this has been written uh, <clears throat> and created with George R. R. Martin. Uh, that's a good yes. thing. Uh, and uh, yes, baby, please. So expect a lot of pain and suffering, both narratively and play. Is this its own new uh, franchise? Like it's not yep. based yeah. on brand new. Yeah, brand new. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I, you know. Uh, now they're saying if you love Dark Souls, Bloodborne, or uh, Sekiro, uh, Shadows uh, Die Twice, keep your eyes on Elden Ring. Now that's interesting because uh, Dark Souls, I played that of course. Uh, I didn't play, I, I played a little bit of Bloodborne, but my son played that and, I, and he completed that game. Uh, that is a rough game, uh, actually. It's very mm-hmm. difficult. Uh, Blood so- uh, Dark Souls, uh, what was the original one called? Demon's Souls. Demon Souls. Yeah. I played and completed that one. I didn't play the Dark Souls. Uh, my son did. Uh, and those games are rough, dude. You really need to pay attention in those games. So if it's that kind of challenging game with a great narrative, which we know Martin will put down me, because I don't care what you think about Martin. It doesn't matter whether you like him or not. That dude can write. He's really yeah. skilled, right? Really? Uh, taking his time with a new book. <laughs> he is slow, but he's skilled, <laughs> dude. He is really good writer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, it just is what it is. Uh, and I, I don't ever understood the controversy around George Martin, but there are some people that ha- absolutely hate him and I don't know why, uh, but whatever, uh, I'm looking forward to that. That looks, that uh, looks very interesting and a new IP too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting to it, dude. Uh, we're still on Xbox, I guess. Um, uh, mainly, uh, Halo I mean, Infinite. <laughs> we're actually going to go through all the games through the, each presentation. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. There's only four okay. pages. We only, we're halfway through. Uh, but right. um, can't say much about Halo. Uh, the trailer was a cinematic. It was yeah. an interesting cinematic, but it didn't tell us anything whatsoever. Uh, I don't know what I to know tell that you. Halo was a huge franchise, but it wasn't my. Those weren't my games, man. No. Um, I, I think it's shooters are too slow, and the enemies are too bullet spongy. It's it's not my thing. No, it's not. And uh, and the fact that I never played. Uh, never played the game, of course, because I, I, I had a, I had, an, I had the original Xbox, but this mm-hmm. came on the Xbox um, 360, I guess it was. No, uh, the original came out in the Xbox as well. Yeah, I uh, did it, but I never I never got it. But um, mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm not a big FPS type of guy, but this was one of the mega mega hits of all time, the Halo. I mean, yeah, come on. yeah. Um, and uh, good for them. Rock on, you know, but uh, I don't have much to say about it. It doesn't sound like anybody else does either, but uh Cool. Uh, oh, oh, the debacle continues. <laughs> Fifty-two player battle ro- uh, royal mode, and they were so uh, excited about I it. I can't even handle a hundred players. No. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it's a uh, uh, Fallout's janky combat mechanics because it is right, uh, and it's really sad because we were. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, but I was really excited about Fallout Four. I mean, I loved Fallout Three. I love that game. Right. And uh, maybe right. until recently, um, you know, Bethesda is one of my favorite companies and they've just been screwing up royally for a few years here. Uh, and I understand all the stuff with uh, Elder Scroll and the wonkiness. And I agree. Uh, I do. Uh, but um, the Fallout 4 was not a great game. It really wasn't. And it's because they went away from what worked with Fallout and they and they and they screwed it up because fallout uh if you here here it is this is a breakdown why fallout 3 is so much better than fallout 4 fallout 3 you were alone you felt isolated you felt the world it was stretched out and and you also uh, there was a linear path for the story but you could actually just kind of go anywhere you want and do whatever you wanted and it, it, and it had that 
that that threat level, that desperation, that sadness, uh, it was built into that game absolutely beautiful. It was baked into it, right? Fallout 4, however, uh, was bright, eternally linear, and it totally lost that feeling that Fallout had. And it's like, how did they screw that up so bad? How did you make such a reversal? Because Fallout 4 sucks hard well, balls, dude. I mean, if he stayed with around the city area um yeah you would lose that but you know there was times when i was playing fallout 4 and i just had the music the old radio music on and exploring and you had that same isolation back there yeah i suppose there might be moments but i i i could not believe how what a step down it was i mean graphically it looks pretty good when you're not dealing right. with all the wonky uh glitches well uh but um I, uh, it 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 just not nowhere near the same as fallout 3 dude not even close mm-hmm. yeah i think the problem is was more that they were trying to do this story that doesn't really work for fallout yeah um, yeah and you're right eagle 43 uh, fallout new vegas was awesome it was um, yeah, I, I, I get you. Uh, but the, the reason I mentioned that is because Fallout 76 is basically Fallout 4, uh, but online. It's not even a different game. It's literally Fallout 4. And they keep saying, no, it's not. No, uh, bullshit. It's the same engine. It's exactly the same thing, actually. Uh, and it's yeah. such a joke. I mean, once again, we were just talking about the isolation and the feel of Fallout. Now they have a Battle Royale mode. Mm-hmm. And they were excited about it. Uh, this right here always goes wire. No, we were people were cla- no. The funniest thing is people were clapping when they said, "You're going to have NPCs." Yeah, that to was soon. funny too. It's like, why didn't you have that from the beginning, right? Yeah. And they were excited about it, but they were just trying to. They, that was damage control. The Bethesda conference was pure damage control. You even had uh, Todd Howard coming out and doing uh, the self-deprecating Sweet humor. Lies. Sweet little lies from Todd, little little bitty Todd Howard. Uh, he and uh, and uh, Sadiq Khan seem to have something in common. Ooh, he said it. He said it. He did. He did. He said it. Oh, it. <laughs> Ghostwire. We talked about this a little bit. There's nothing really to yeah. say that we don't have any clue what this is. The, uh, but the yeah. internet was enthralled by uh ikumi uh naka nakamura the the, 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 nakamura would be a proper name yeah um i don't know offhand but i do know the japanese were really talking about this in japan uh yeah uh, they weren't talking about a lot of uh uh, non-nintendo games uh, actually um, and uh, most of the noise here in Japan, as far as the gaming world, was really bitching at PlayStation for not showing up. Uh, but um, uh, they did talk about this game, but no one knows anything, and the, and the, and this didn't help us. Uh, it seems to maybe be after the rapture, is what yeah. seems to be this is about. So well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Wolfenstein, uh, Wolfenstein, uh, Young Bloods. <laughs> no. Oh boy. Go ahead, Booster. Go oh. ahead. Dude. Oh. It looks like a fun game, mm-hmm. but the two main characters look insufferable. Yep. Get a super but... ultra woke lady game. And uh, oh, yep, yeah, that's what we want. That's exactly what we asked for. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Especially seeing as women don't play these games. Have you guys noticed when you watch uh, like uh, IGN or, or GameSpot or uh, any of these uh, things, and, you, and, and especially if you go read articles like Kotaku or Polygon, uh, they, of course, they very rarely talk about games. It's always about politics. Uh, but when you see these ladies up there, every now and then there's a gamer girl. And you can always see her. You always, uh, you don't even have to hear her speak. And like, oh, that's a gamer girl. She's an actual gamer, right? But there's so mm-hmm. much of these ladies that are on those shows just, just to be the token woman, and they know nothing about video games, and they're reading off a script. Uh, you can tell, and it's like, come on, guys. There are that we know most women don't play these kind of games. We get it, but there are some women who do. Why don't you go hire them, right? Oh, I'm sorry, they're not pretty enough. Well, I thought you were woke. I thought what well, prettiness isn't necessary. I guess it is, huh? I talk about hypocrisy, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. when you see the gamer girls, they're usually a bit chubby and uh, they're they're uh, they're a little bit nerdy uh, or a lot nerdy, uh, and that's okay. They're they're one of us, right? Uh, but they always have these gorgeously painted up, uh, you know, ladies sitting. I, I use a nice word. I said lady uh, sitting on the <laughs> stage. Yeah, I love 
Hey, Lou, I played it on the PlayStation all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's full of it. They're full of it, dude. And it's it just kills me because you you, you talk about the male gaze and the, these games are have so many ugly females. Look at those faces. Look at how ugly they are. And they do it they do it intentionally, right? And but yet at the same time, these companies make sure they put a pretty girl in front of you instead of just actually going and get an actual gamer girl. <clears throat> right? You know, and it's nonsense because, you know, we know that there's a lower percentage of women play these games, but they are, they do exist. I mean, just go hire the actual gamer, right? Uh, Deathloop, uh, I remember this barely. Uh, should I play the trailer again to remind myself a little bit? Uh, oh, this was the one where it was like a simple top down uh, indie game, I think. Was it? No, no, no. no. no that's no, not no. that one. I, I'm, I, I, I'm thinking oh, of the yeah. other one. Yeah, no, that one looked interesting. I don't. I know I saw this, but I don't remember it. Oh, right, this, this one. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a prison. I They're shooting each other. And... Yeah, no, I'm not gonna bother watching this again. Uh, this is uh, once again super woke, and I think this is Ubisoft, right? Um, and it's um, super woke. Uh, you, 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 there aren't even any white dudes or Asian dudes or, or Latin dudes to play at all. You know, make it, it's time. You know, uh, Doom Eternal booster. Wow, no comment. How about you, Danelli? It's Doom. You're gonna kill demons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks beautiful, though. It does. I look mean, good. what what else what else it can be said? There's they're not changing the formula. I mean, no, and it changed the back. It changed it back to what it was mm -hmm. from a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, then, no. Uh, Eagle forty three says uh, Wolfenstein Youngbloods will be Booster's favorite game. Ah, uh, maybe. Uh, Eagle forty three continues saying Cuphead is my favorite PS four game. Uh, that is a that was a wonderfully interesting and different game. It really was, and Ooh. it's it's tough, dude. That is a difficult game, man. Oh, oh, you ain't you ain't talking about Doom without me, eh? No, dude, we were. I I actually brought you up first, and you and you absolutely disrespected and showed me nothing but hate. Okay, go ahead. I, 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 just it. I told you I needed to pee. <laughs> did you? Where did you tell me this? Like a couple of well, thirty seconds ago, depending on how long I needed to pee. But regardless, <laughs> Doom is looking awesome. <laughs> I love. I like it when the guitar comes in, like, and you're just shooting things, you're flying through the fucking air, and you're grappling enemies and just soaring everywhere, blasting everyone. I love the crap out of this, man. It looks awesome. It does look awesome. You know, the thing that was interesting to me is it, it felt to me watching the trailers, this is a 3D platformer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. It's interesting, I think, because that's really what it felt like to me. It felt like a 3D platformer. Uh, well, and, uh, it, it's more reminiscent of the the original PCs, uh, Dooms, because if you kind of play those, um, you were kind of floating and platforming. Yeah. No, I remember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doom was like the first big uh, FPS, I think, uh, that I remember. Mm -hmm. There, there probably was something before it, I'm sure, but uh, yeah. uh, Doom was the first FPS I remember. Or was it Quake? Hmm. I think it was Doom. No, uh, no, it was Doom because Quake came out of Doom. Because it was it. Quake well, was the, yeah, go. because it was a championship. That's the whole game, you know, P, uh, P versus P player versus player that's where it came from oh, okay yeah. well there you go uh but i do remember doom when it first came out but it looks great mm -hmm. looks like a fun game and if you like fps this is uh <clears throat> some great kills coming at you with uh here in doom uh evil genius 2 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no yeah. uh, okay uh, just back in the day. yeah well uh you know you get to play as this character now i don't know who this is but it's a. Uh, uh yeah, mm -hmm. I have no clue. Uh, maybe I don't really know. I I don't even have any understanding of that. Uh, Chivalry two, um, yeah, I mean it looked okay. Um, I didn't play the first one. I know about the game, but um, but everyone is really talking about it. It seems uh, they really enjoy this game. So it's a uh, Chivalry two. I I don't have anything to say. You guys have anything? No, nope. I haven't even played <laughs> Chivalry. Yeah. A few times it, it was okay yeah 
it's uh, I don't know enough about it to really comment. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, now, <clears throat> I'm going to watch this uh, trailer. I'm watching yeah, this trailer. Oh. We're watching it. You guys ready? Yeah. Don't watch the 20 I minute gameplay no, with I'm a journalist that doesn't know doesn't know how to that. play. I'm not doing that. I love Paradox. Paradox uh, surviving uh, Mars. Love that game. You're dead. And this is another game that's pre-alpha gameplay, which kind of alarms me because they say that this is supposed to come out first quarter to uh, 2020. Yeah. This city. We're all fighting over scraps here. Uh, there's the I main writer, Brian. Whatever you do in my city, I will hear about it. Seattle is firmly under my Seattle. What a great choice for a city. You're obviously new to this whole existence, but truth is, most of you types won't even make it a whole year. So you probably figured out that you need to drink blood. You can't just do whatever you want. Cities are carved up by political factions. Never tell anyone about what you are. Mm. See, vampires are extremely territorial. Unwittingly poach in someone's territory and suddenly flip. We have one rule. You don't break the masquerade. Wow. Talk about exactly the wrong person to introduce your game. And this trailer's volume is way hot, dude. Um, welcome to the first day of the rest of your yeah. death. Having fun yet? Did someone say something about Nosferatu not being available in the new Vampire game? Say it isn't so, Eagle 43. Yeah, they're oh. not They're not one of the starting things. They'll come in a DLC uh, I afterwards. See. Yeah, Gangrel too, right? Gangrel as well. Yeah. Right. I have bad news for you. Uh -huh. He's in hiding. What so if I could just find this um, little post. <clears throat> so on Twitter, someone says, I was wondering if the Nosferatu clan was playable in Bloodline 2. I hope not, as I don't like the suggestion the player is some kind of hideous monster that needs to stay out of sight. <laughs> Something I have to deal with every day as a trans woman. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Vampire the Masquerade uh, replied, their Twitter replied to this tweet to and says, Hi Jess, you'll be glad to know that we decided against making the Nosferatu plan a choice for the player from the outset for exactly those reasons. The last thing we would want is for the one of our players to feel unsafe or unwanted. Uh, yeah, I think the misunderstanding what the game Vampire game is about, I think they kind of right. lost the plot. A well, little. yeah. Well, it's Nosferatu is coming as DLC later on, and you, and here's the thing: you can choose to become a Nosferatu. That's an in-game choice. You start as a thin blood for this. Oh, I see. So, uh, and then you'll, because the only way you become part of the clan, is you have to diablerize one of these. Sure, I get NPCs. it. Uh, but here's the thing. I'm getting... Uh, well, first of all, this looks better than Shenmue 3, uh, but yeah. not much so. Well, uh, this is and... the alpha gameplay. Yeah, that's true. We, 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 let's be nice. But um, uh, Bloodlines was a great, great game. Uh, and uh, I'm really concerned because, uh, unfortunately, with the uh, Mind's Eye Theater uh, has taken over Vampire itself. And Mind's Eye Theater is, uh, is SJW Central. Uh, yeah. This is an unfortunate thing. They've adapted, uh, uh, they've uh, you know, hij hijacked and kidnapped Vampire. Uh, so right. this is a constant concern for me in this. And they have said, the creators have said very clearly, that there will be female-centric in the, in the, in the properly progressive storylines. And it's like, man. Man. Uh, but I li I, uh, like Booster said before, we kind of got to trust in Paradox a little bit here. Uh, yeah. To to thin that out, water that down a little bit. I don't right. remember saying that. Wasn't it you? Maybe it was. Uh, uh maybe it was Landaro. <laughs> Someone said that. Landaro's <laughs> uh, <laughs> hearing things again. No, uh, whatever. Uh, transfer <laughs> transferatu, dude. You need to make a meme about that. Transferatu. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Transferatu. Yeah. That was just confirmed. some of the dumbest line of reasoning to not add a. Uh, 
class to a game that I've ever heard in my life. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Stupid. And you know, I mean, here's the thing: if they're gonna add Malkavians, which is dealing with mental illness. health, yeah, illness, then of course they're gonna add Nasferatu's. Of course. And it's about being a monster. That's the whole damn yeah. point. Um, but um, <laughs> whatever, dude. Uh, but uh, I do think it's funny that I feel like a monster every day. Well, you know, uh, uh, if we, <laughs> if you look a little like some of the trainees I've seen in my life, uh, I, I kind of get it. Yep. Uh, who, <laughs> who was the famous Olympian that came out and it was just so beautiful? So Bruce Jenner is so beautiful. Jenner? No, he wasn't. I mean, it was tragic and shockingly horrific. Okay, mm-hmm. it was. No, now, I don't, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Now I have no problem. Oh, breach if I ridiculous. One. You know, and I don't give a. Sh- I don't. Oh, excuse me. I won't. I won't swear. I don't care what yeah. Bruce Jenner does. Really don't. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Caden Jenner. Now less. Well, less dude, the, that whole property. Kurt. That whole uh, Kard- Kardashian clan are absolute toxic humans anyway. Uh, but yeah. um, I don't care what he or they do, for that matter. What I do care yeah. about is the fact that everybody and their brother gave him the Woman of the Year award. And it was like, uh, do you realize how insulting you're being to women right now? I mean, talk about misogyny, right? Well, again, remember, all those awards are meaningless. They just proved it. Obviously. Uh, and we've seen a lot of that, unfortunately. The Oscars has completely neutered itself. The Eisner Awards, which is in the comic book world, which is ours, is complete, completely screwed itself over. It has no value, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it is what it is. Anyway, Midnight Ghost Hunt. I have no clue. I didn't even see this one. I must have missed this on the uh, PC Gaming Show where I just uh, nodded out because of that crazily boring British lady. Mm-hmm. New, uh, booster? Uh, um, I don't recall this. I don't right. care. Yo, last yeah. page. Last page. Uh, Zombie Army 4 Dead War, uh, uh, Dead War. Now, obviously, on this page, they're talking about the 41 best ones in there in PC World's opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know this one either. I don't recall seeing this one. Tired of zombies and zombie wars. Yeah, That's just, just like... It's just a call. It's like we have nothing better to make, so let's make zombies so people can shoot at it. Mm-hmm. You know, I still that's, love that's it. Transferatu, that is awesome, dude. Uh, but uh, Transferatu, it's hilarious. I don't care. I'm I'm so over zombies. It's not. I'm so over zombies, dude. The board yeah. gaming world has been completely inundated by it. Uh, it even affected comics. The movie world is inundated. The video game world is inundated. I am done with zombies. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Planet Zoo. I saw this. It looked okay. I don't know who wants this. Maybe this is a a chick title. A chick uh, pick. Uh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I guess some people love those building games where there's just so do I. no point to them. Yeah, I, I love building I, games too. I, I love I Civ, and you know, I don't get it either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about it, though, so it seems to be some uh, interesting stuff. And yeah, no, uh, you're right, Eagle Forty Three. I'm waiting for Luigi Mansion to be on this or something from uh, Nintendo. I agree. I thought that it looked really fun game actually. Shenmue Three, really, dude, really, dude, really. <sighs> First of all, this looks <laughs> Look like at crap. The face of the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, dude, it looks like crap. It, the game looks bad. And, of course, you have this absolute scandal, uh, which they're not going to let it go. This is this is going to hurt it. And I don't understand the Epic game. I, I get them trying to compete. And there's some Chinese company is coming out and trying to compete hard against us, Steam. I get it. But they are causing, they're creating so many enemies uh, in the way they're doing things. It's like, I know the Chinese don't care about nothing. I understand this. But this is going to hurt you, man. This this is the tactics uh, Epic is doing, and this Shenmue thing is going to come on. Do you know how long the fans of Shenmue have been waiting for this? And ultimately, what they're saying is, you used us to get the Ten money. To... Yeah, well, you're, you're... Ten... that's the other reason because we all hate Tencent. They're they're the, they're even the people financing the new Terminator Dark Fate movie. Oh wow, yeah, no, and that movie is horrible. Um, but yeah. um, 
you know, here's something that I think Westerners don't understand about China, uh, because uh, you see Hollywood completely supports ho- uh, China for a, a decade, right? Because the Chinese money's been in there, and, and that you never see China as the enemy. You never see a- any of that stuff, right? They completely whitewash China. But here's the thing about China: uh, if you understand the history of Tiananmen Square, understand that things have not gotten better since then; they've gotten worse. All right. That's the simplest thing for you to understand China. Uh, a lot of these big companies here, you think, oh, China's going capitalistic. Uh, the co- people can make companies. No. no, they don't, dude. They are controlled by the Communist Party. The Communist Party has final say on everything. They get to make a decision on who gets to be uh, rich and who doesn't, right? Uh, that is what the reality is. So Tencent and any other Chinese company you see that's making big money, they are 100% under the thumb of the Communist Party. Don't get it twisted. That is the reality. And a lot of Western people think, oh, China is so much better, it's changed. No, dude, it's freaking nightmare, dude. If you say even the slightest thing wrong, you disappear, right? Uh, and, of course, if you're also been paying attention, Hong Kong is they're trying to absorb Hong Kong. But we have uh, on Sunday here and today, you're seeing millions of Hong Kong people walking in the streets trying to defy and stand against uh, what China is doing. But this is the reality of China. And I think Western people just don't get it, dude. Uh, now, uh, you're over here in this uh, hemisphere with me, uh, Booster. Uh, uh, so you and I oh, maybe yeah. have a better understanding of China than the West. Well, thank you for dismissing me. Yeah. Well, I'm, just, I'm, well, I'm not talking about every single person. I'm talking about the general populace, dude. Mm-hmm. What, what's uh, your stand on uh, uh, China and New Zealand right now? I I don't know. I don't I don't pay attention to that. Well, I'm in Japan, so I have to pay attention. But um, <laughs> China is uh, it's really not a good place, man. It's a nightmare situation. Communism is, is, uh, is brave and strong in that country. And... Uh, it is it is what it is, but uh, these companies that are coming out just don't think they're some independent, rich, successful person. Nuh-uh. They are 100% controlled, and uh, they are under the thumb of the Communist Party completely. Uh, Man Eater. Uh, I saw this one, uh, and uh, it's uh, basically your hunt, uh, your shark uh, who is uh, eating and killing people. And you can like oh. upgrade your shark with all kind of cool upgrades like uh, steel teeth and uh, super jumps and things like that. I don't know. GTA with then sharks. He, then he'll become the ultimate shark, Jaws, and fight James Bond out of the moon. All right, fine. Uh, I, I don't know. The trailer was fun looking, I guess. I thought it was, uh, yeah, it was fine. Uh, I, I didn't really care much about it, but some people like these kind of quirky games. Uh, anything mm-hmm. on this booster? Mm, nope, I don't like shocks. Oh, there you go. They terrify me. They terrify you. Uh, Warframe. Now, booster uh, <gasps> actually got me to go back and play this game. I played uh, Warframe when it very first came out. You know, years ago. What is it? Seven, eight years now. Um, mm-hmm. uh, when it first came out, I played it. I wasn't interested because I don't like the aesthetics of the game. Uh, Booster got me to go back and play it, and I still don't like the aesthetics of the game. And it feels so lonely. The game is just you're you just feel you're all by yourself. Even when you're a team, it just has no connection and i think it's that damn little ship they put you in because you're in this ship mm-hmm. and you're moving around that ship by yourself it just feels isolated and i'm not interested in that um i just don't like warframe but this game has a absolutely fanatic loyal uh, uh, uh following and we have one of those fanatics right here booster mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. go ahead yeah that's true i i have over five thousand hours on this game mm-hmm. it's mental well, they and, have space uh, battles coming now, right? Yep, yep. They're going. It's a little bit. Um, oh, what's what's the word? I don't remember the word. <laughs> I think they're way way over their heads. I think they're absolute nutters. And the problem with Warframe is they tend to develop new little gameplay scenarios, right? Little new game modes, and it's very bare bones, and then they abandon it. That's uh, the real problem with these developers. And my worry is that there's going to be like a meta way to do these new missions that they introduce, right? Right. Uh, People are going to cheese it within two minutes, grind it over and over again, get all the rewards, then abandon it. Because that's Warframe in a nutshell. 
Well, there you go. Yeah, I, it's just not my kind of thing, but I know people love it, and that's mm. cool. I'm happy it's seeing it's seeing all the success it is. I, I think it's great. It's great. And the one thing that uh, you know, even though that was a negative point that Booster made, the positive point about Warframe, they listen to their community. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you need to do. Unlike other companies, mm. <clears throat> uh, Bullet says something about Bethesda is a trash fire. Oh goodness, no. Uh, anyway, uh, telling lies. What the hell is this? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, oh, so the people who are, of her story. Oh, I, I'm just uh, her story is uh, I was not interested at all. I think I saw these guys talking. Oh yeah, I saw this. All right, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, not even a little bit interested at all. Yeah, weirdos, yeah, nonsense. Uh, but no, not necessarily. Uh, I think this is a chick pick, and that's cool. Weirdos. Uh, I don't mind women enjoying. Okay, here we go. Here's oh, dear, enjoy things. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, but here's one I actually want to talk about. Uh, Watch Dogs. Mm, Denali, what did, what did you think, dude? Uh, it's okay, but it's Ubisoft, so whatever they present, it's not really what it's going to be in the game. I mean, there's been times where they presented an awesome thing for in these shows, and then when we actually get the product, it's not that good. Yeah. What about you, so, uh, Booster? Uh, what's this, Watch Dogs? Yeah, I wasn't interested in the first or second one, and um, I'm not interested in this. The problem with Ubisoft games is they always release the same bloody game every year, no matter what they uh, call the franchise, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to have parkour, it's going to have towers to climb up and explore stuff, it's going to have bare bones upgrade systems that are there for the sake of it, it's going to be cut, seen heavy, and they're going to release it every bloody year. Well, that's an Ubisoft game. It is, it's true. Uh, and... Um... Uh, my son uh, actually played Watch Dogs, and uh, um, it, uh, the story was okay. It was fine. It wasn't a bad story. Uh, I think the idea is better than the than the than what was presented is the issue. Now, this is what I'll say about this one. This is the first Watch Dogs that actually cut, has my interest. Because what they're saying, and to keep in mind what Denali just said, but what they're saying is every person you see in London that's not an enemy you can recruit and make them part of your team. Every person. And uh, you've had several commentators say, well, I don't think it'll really be this or that, or they'll probably just have a few scripted, da 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 da, da. No. I watched the uh, full-on documentary, The Making of Watch- Watchdog Legions, and they said very clearly, every person you see in London can be recruited. They repeated it over and over. They were very emphatic about it. So if this game comes mm-hmm. out and every person in London cannot be recruited, they sh- they're they're going to get they're going to burn hard for it because they are pushing yeah. hard. And the, here's the thing, though, Booster, if it is true, that could be a badass game, dude. It'd be interesting, but it, uh, I'm worried that it's just going to be a little gimmick. Yeah, it, you know, it might be, it might be. Mm. Yeah. And I watched gameplay, um, and even though the trailer from Ubi, all uh, Ubisoft trailers are all about uh, uh, the 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 blackness and 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 uh, Black Lives Matter, there are the Ubisoft is 100% SJW on board. So the trailers mm-hmm. are, are like that, but the gameplay is normal, right? Uh, uh, in general, they're, they're, they're going to have storylines. It's they're 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 going to have nonsense in it. But uh, I don't know if they pull this off. I think it might be an interesting game. So I, I'm going to actually keep an eye on this one myself. Um, uh, yeah, no, you're 100 percent right, Roger. Uh, Cyberpunk looks f- way more interesting than any Watchdog game. But the thing is, Cyberpunk looks way more interesting than pretty much any game. I mean, it li- oh, really yeah. looks cool, and, and I hope they pull it off, dude, because we've been working on this game for seven. They've been working on it for seven years, dude. That's a long yeah. development, man. So I have my fingers crossed. Uh, what would you guys think of uh, uh, Ghost Recon and Punisher? Punisher. This guy is typecast. I mean, he's he's forever typecast now, I think. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's whatever. Uh, yeah, looks, I don't, I don't, it looks, yeah. looks good, though. I mean, uh, the mechanics look really good. Uh, it really is uh, uh, impressive, the type of, uh, you know, if you like FPS, this game is like a, a wet dream, dude. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they do have a storyline in it as well with uh, with our Punisher boy here. I can't remember his name. What is his name? John Berthanel or something? Berthanel? Well, whatever. Yeah. He's not a bad actor, actually. 
Um, uh, mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I just wish season two were like season one, but it is what it is. Uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine. Now, we didn't see much on this. Uh, I haven't seen any follow-ups, but then again, uh, I, today and tomorrow, I need to go watch more trailers and watch more of the GameSpot coverage. Uh, to, and I'm sure they'll talk about it. But uh, you guys, and my, my son is a big Rainbow Six uh, player. Uh, he and his uh, team are actually very highly ranked. Uh, but my son is a really good FPS guy. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, he's just really good at that. Uh, but uh, my son lo- and, and the Japanese kids love this game, right? Uh, and this is actually probably the biggest uh, shooter in Japan is this one, oddly enough, right? Uh, do you guys have any opinion on Rainbow Six at all? Nope. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, not a- <clears throat> well it's interesting to me. Uh, that here in Japan, Rainbow Six is the big shooter. I mean, there's so many other things to choose. How did this one become the big one over here? I don't know, but the, they love it. Especially the high school, college age kids. They're just all over this game. Like I said, my my son, he has um, uh, on the on the weekends. Uh, they they have like I think it's on Sunday. Uh, they actually have like a Rainbow Rainbow Six uh, day, and he organized a room over at his uh, uh, school or something like that. Uh, his university, and they actually have a big old rain, Rainbow Six get together, and they—it's kind of like a land party. Remember the old land parties from uh, back in the nineties? Uh, yeah, yeah no, it's kind of good old land parties. We still do. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like that what they're doing. I thought mm-hmm. it was kind of cool, uh, but uh, I'm not an FPS guy. But uh, rock on, gods and monsters. That was this was an interesting trailer, dude. Um, uh, I don't know how much one time we got a few minutes left, so um, we, of course we're going to cover the hell out of this one because that's our last one is this one. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> l- let's watch the trailer again because I thought it was pretty. Uh, it's interesting. Let- let's take a look at it. It's a short trailer. It's this thing, uh, and I'm surprised they don't have Nino Kuni on here because that is a Studio Ghibli game, uh, and it's stunningly gorgeous. Was this just a list of PC games? Because Final Fantasy VII wasn't here either. This is a PC Worlds uh, considers to be the best of the show. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Remake wasn't in there either. We need to talk about that a little bit too. Mm-hmm. They turn to you. So it is the God's Champion uh, is what you're playing in this. Hmm. It's an interesting art style, dude. It's uh, Zelda-esque, right? Gods and All right. Available February and it's from uh, Ubisoft. It is. It is. It's interesting. I thought so. We don't know much about it. And like I'm saying, I'm hoping over today and tomorrow we're going to get some more gameplay on this or some more stuff. But I don't know. Uh, this is the E3 of cinematics. So uh, there's not a lot of gameplay this uh, weekend. And maybe... Uh, maybe this is why PlayStation didn't come. Maybe they just didn't have something to show. Uh, and, of course, we know they're in absolute turmoil, Sony in general. Uh, I mean, think about it. They're not even making computers anymore, right? Uh, Sony is in in an in a, in a incredible uh, uh, fall, uh, uh, just a deep dive fall. Um, and uh, also there seems to be a lot of controversy around PlayStation itself. I don't know what all the new drama is. Do you guys know? No, not at all. Not at all. Anyway, I'm not going to play this because it's kind of long, uh, but um, uh, I will start and then let these guys uh, finish it. Um, uh, it does look like Kid Icarus. You're right, Eagle 43. I agree. Uh, uh, bring back uh, Rainbow Six Vegas. Interesting. Uh, but um, this is what I'll say about this Avengers game. Uh, it's obviously not completely finished. Uh, obviously, but it's close. It's really close. It needs a little more polish. And until uh, next spring, I'm sure it will get polish. Um, but uh, but the thing I actually loved about it was the fact that it is not the cinematic universe's Avengers. It is not. Now, they picked the same ones from the cinematic universe because that's what everybody knows, and I get that. But they are not a carbon copy of Chris Evans uh, and Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth. It's not. They did their own thing. They took their own look. Crystal Dynamics, which is a great company, took their own look at it, and it's it's different. That is what I like, that they had the balls not to be forced to just copy what the movie universe says. Uh, and that is very interesting. And this is after, this is a brand new story, completely separate story, but it certainly has elements of the post-Civil uh, War feel to it. 
in my opinion. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to this. I hope the polish makes it fin makes it better. Uh, some people are saying, well, the the characters aren't on are aren't on uh, uh, on mark. They're not on model. I think that's great that they're not on model. I don't need the cinematic universe to be put into my game. It's not nece necessary, right? Uh, so I love that point, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's awesome. This is, however, this is, however, a um, uh, one of those uh, uh, games as a service game. Unfortunately, it is. It's going to have loot boxes. Uh, it's going to. It's going to. It's. It, it, and there's no way around it. Uh, this worries me incredibly. If it's just for skins and stuff, rock on. Uh, but um, yeah. So, uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. I, I I was very happy with what I saw in the trailer and in the presentation. And these guys are ready. Uh, they are coming out with a formula that is going to be quarterly. It's going to be a pass. It's it's a it's a money grab. Uh, but it looks fun. That's what I have to say, Denali. Um, I didn't know what the heck I was watching. I had, I even am less inclined because you said there's going to be loot boxes in it. So it's a pass for me. Yeah, it is games as a service. Uh, it is a season pass type of game. It is. It is. Uh, it, I mean, you know, whether you like it or not. Uh, but I have a feeling this might end up underneath one of the general passes uh, from the companies like Microsoft or PlayStation's uh, pass thing where you pay a certain amount of, was it 10 bucks a month and you get access to all this kind of stuff? I think it's going to end up being in that model, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what do you think, Booster? I think it's looking pretty bloody great. Uh, yeah. I don't really know what it is so far. Like we have, we saw a bit of gameplay, but it was just flashes of it. We, on that bridge scene, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So we're not 100% sure what kind of game it is. And, well, uh, yeah, as some of the people are saying, Black Widow's face is a bit off, and I've seen people compare her to Prince Charming from Shrek 2, and it's uncanny. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I like the fact that the models are different. And, yeah, there's a, they need to, it needs a bit of polish. Uh, but we are uh, almost a year out from it, uh, and uh, I think we will get a little bit of polish. And, of course, they will listen to what the people said. Crystal Dynamics will listen uh, to what the fans have said, and they will make some slight adjustments. Uh, I think uh, the gameplay we saw looked fine, um, uh, but um, yeah, I, just, I don't know. I, I, the, only, the real thing that worries me is simply the pricing model. Uh, if this is done anything like uh, uh, COD or, or any of those ones that came out with those season passes, which seem to be dying and going away. Uh, but if they, because uh, they did mention that, if they, it's a full on, you know, you have to pay like, you know, 30 bucks every quarter uh, or 50 bucks every quarter to play this game, they're it's dead on arrival, right? Um, and if they loot box the hell out of this thing, and, you know, I don't think it'll be play to win, but uh, even if you, it, with this kind of game, though, and they were talking about other heroes coming, not just the initial five. They're going to have more and more and more. Um, you know they're going to put those behind a paywall. So you're going to have to pay for any skin. And we know this kind of game, you want more skins. You want more characters. And I, I, I just think it's uh, it could end up being an extremely expensive game to, uh, to own and play. They did say that for free. You're right, Joshua. You're right. Uh, I, I I remember now. You are right. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm excited though. Um, but um, anything else to add on that? Nope. All right. Uh, well, let me come back up the top and we'll finish the show today, which was supposed to be Baron uh, Munchausen, which we'll watch next week. Uh, it is a great mm -hmm. movie. We're going to we'll definitely watch it. But uh, uh, we had some many several troubles this uh, the beginning of this week because of E3 and uh, YouTube and stuff. So I'm glad we took the time to to sit and do this. And thank you guys for being in here with us. Uh, but uh, I we need to talk about this, obviously. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Why is it B7? <laughs> no, we... 7 Remake. Remake. Here we go. All right. Uh, now, um, here's the thing. Uh, it looks gorgeous. It is episodic, which is a mistake. But it, but it, yes. but it looks gorgeous. They're going to make you pay through the nose for each little one. Uh, unfortunately, yep. 
but it looks gorgeous. Uh, and uh, that is cool if you want to spend that kind of money, but it looks gorgeous. I don't know what else to say, Booster. I think Final Fantasy VII is overrated. They should have done Final Fantasy VI. <clears throat> but... Well, seven you know, is Final the Fantasy most VII famous is still one a very of all, good right? Game, but also, right. uh, it kind of just looks like Final Fantasy uh, 15 with a seven skin, and I think that's a big mistake deviating from the turn-based combat route. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Some more I also have to see engine. how the other uh, RPG mechanics are done, like the upgrade and materia system. If they just throw all that crap out the window and go for a strictly strictly action-based game, it's gonna be poo. Um, it looks like that's what they're doing, dude. Uh, and the episodic factor, the fact that when you bought Final uh, Fantasy VII originally, you got the entire game and all the worlds. And it's a big game, right? Final Fantasy VII is huge with all the different areas and places and things you can do in that. In this one, uh, you're only getting, uh, <laughs> what are we getting, just Midgard or, uh, uh, not Midgard, um, uh, Asgard, or you're just getting the main area. Mid- Midgard, yeah. Midgard. Yeah, mid So right. if we're, yeah, then we're just getting like the first section, the whole first section. Be, yeah. And then it'll probably end when we get escape from Midgard, and that that'll be it. Probably. And they said they're doing three, so there's going to be three games basically. You got to pay sixty bucks, seventy, eighty bucks, whatever it is, each one. Uh, so they've mm-hmm. taken a uh, Final Fantasy and broken it into a hundred and eighty, two hundred dollar game. That's basically what they did. Yep. Yep. So, it's uh, uh, but it is it does look really beautiful. Uh, the gameplay looks fun, but mm-hmm. I mean, and, and I'm not a Final Fantasy guy, so someone like me might actually be, oh, that looks fun. Uh, but um, the uh, the Final Fantasy people, I, I I I'm I'm seeing mixed mixed opinions, uh, like you saw here from Booster. So, uh, mm-hmm. that is a cool little statue, though. Uh, the Cyberpunk statue looks nice too, dude. Right. If you're into spending several hundred bucks for 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 this kind of stuff, well, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I just want the game. <laughs> I could care less for the statue. The statue's not my thing. You know something I thought was interesting because, like I said, I, I don't I don't play fan of uh, the Final Fantasy stuff at all. Uh, but um, the I thought it was interesting while watching because uh, uh, Square Enix dedicated a lot of time to this game as they should um, a, in their conference, and uh, there was a girl who came up like midway through the trailer. And when mm-hmm. she came up, the crowd lost their damn mind. Who is she? People yeah. complaining her boobies are sm- too small or something like that. Uh, but uh, the, whoever Wait, that... Tifa. Tifa, yeah, that's her name. Why is she so popular? Just curious. Oh, she was like a sex symbol for a Final Fantasy VII. I guess she was like the sexy chick character. Uh, yeah. She's very popular. She wasn't. She was also not in the previous trailer, so I'd imagine that's why people went absolutely nuts. Right. She was. She was the second hero. Uh, second love interest. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. Tifa. Thanks, Eagle. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. I just not a Final Fantasy guy, uh, but um, uh, I I know it's uh, it's hugely loved, and <laughs> I I hope it turns out well. Uh, for everybody. Uh, I do see uh, Ro- uh, Roger. We're going to get that an eagle in a moment. We will. Uh, Roger says, uh, how does it have uh, the summons or just power uh, uh, up moves? Uh, because when I saw the trailer, it didn't see any summons. But they do have summons because you get su- you you get summons with the DLC. Uh, so right. I don't, but know. what? Summons with the DLC? Yeah, I, include I summon see. the period DLCs. Yeah. Oh, Marco. no. <laughs> Choke That's a chick. terrible idea. Yeah, she was the chick that didn't get impaled. Uh, is there some kind of sexual innuendo? Spoilers. Oh, no, Aerith gets uh, murdered by Sephiroth. Mur- yeah, oh, pretty. Uh, oh, the the blonde, be- the blonde, famous uh, gay looking bad guy. I get it. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> we G, uh, Man Chion three. Hi. Hey. Uh, let me see here. Um, Working hmm. title? Maybe just this one? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, here we go. We could just... Uh, well, that's not a very good... Anime. Okay, okay, here we go. Um, uh, not now. Okay. Uh, but um, I have to say... Uh, first of all, I think we... Uh, <laughs> you, you go Continue away. Continue blocker. 
okay you 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 over here you shut up you and your people and your pop-ups pain in my butt uh these tech people. radar uh but anyway these people are rubbish. exactly uh but uh, here's the thing Complete though rubbish. um uh, Nintendo obviously has killed this. Uh, uh, I mean, I saw a few things I like, but uh, Nintendo has showed a lot of good games and a lot of good gameplay. And uh, I, I, I think Nintendo's won the uh, won the E3 this year for sure. Uh, and uh, everyone's really excited about Luigi. Now, I've never played Luigi uh, Mansion. Have you? No, I haven't. I you have. have. You have. You have the second one. Yeah. My it's a daughter... fun game. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, please. I was going to say, no, it's a fun little game, especially if you're, like, riding the bus or waiting or, you know, just a simple game. You don't have to think about it, and it's just a little exploration kind of deal. My daughter loved this game. Uh, the uh, the I guess the first one or second one I don't know. Uh, but my daughter really liked Luigi. She's a big she she prefers Luigi over Mario any day. Uh, and uh, she played this uh, Luigi Mansion. Uh, mansion. I think it was on uh, the the Wii maybe, or the Wii U. Wii. Wii. Uh, and uh, she played this a lot. She liked this game. Um, I, I watched her play. I might even played. Uh, there might have been like a co-op where I could play with her or something like that. Because when the Wii came out, that was a a big hit worldwide. But here in Japan, that thing was epic, right? Everybody owned one, and uh, I actually had four uh, controllers for the Wii. And uh, the interesting thing about the Wii is uh, we would play as a family, which is no other video game console or system where we did that. But as a family, we would play the sports or various things together. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing, we actually had her parents, uh, and her parents are in the 80s, keep this in mind, uh, but we had her parents over here uh, just visiting one night, and uh, uh, we decided to just turn the Wii on. We gave her, uh, gave uh, the kids and grandma and grandpa the controllers, and uh, they sat and for hours played Wii together. Uh, the Wii was absolutely freaking amazing thing because it crossed those borders, dude. And uh, this is one of the games my we had on that. My daughter played it a lot. So, awesome. Did you guys did you guys play the Wii? I played a little bit of the Wii. Uh, it was an all right little console. Yeah, no, I, I thought played, it was... I played more of the Wii U. Yeah, no, we got that too. Well, we got the Wii U as well. But, I mean, I buy every console that comes out, actually. Uh, but um, uh, the uh, they had another thing. They had like this yoga mat box thing uh, that my wife mm-hmm. used. And my wife actually never plays oh, video Wii games. Fit. Yeah, the Wii yeah. Fit. Uh, my wife never plays video games, dude, ever. I mean, she's just not into mm. it. She's like, she doesn't watch anime. She doesn't play video games. The whole My whole house is a video game nerd, you know, uh, anime comic book nerd house, right? Uh, you know, uh, but not my wife. Uh, but she used that fit thing every day. Every day. <laughs> I like to think that the uh, Wii Fit was Nintendo's apology for their past in raising a generation of fat kids. Maybe I don't know. Japanese aren't fat, dude, at all. Uh, but um, <laughs> not 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 in the Japanese side, but the Western, yeah, the Western side. side, sure, sure. Uh, but you know, uh, but that's where my wife started the yoga. Actually, was with the We Fit. That's where her, because you know, you guys hear me say, "Oh, my wife's doing yoga." Uh, that's where she started it. Nice. Uh, Eagle forty three says. Also, Chester, you forgot to talk about the amazing Just Dance game. Uh, no, I didn't forget. I, I intentionally forgot. See, there's a difference. Uh, but uh, those games always suck. But you, you know, freaking Ubisoft, man. Um, uh, <laughs> we, okay, so uh, it, we're at the end here. We talked about Luigi. Uh, yeah. Let me come. Let me come back over to uh, the Hangouts. And uh, this is not what we were intending to do today. But I actually had a lot of fun, so I'm glad we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, here's the question, I guess. Um, we had the E E three the EA conference. Uh, we had the Devolver uh, Insanity. Uh, we had Bethesda. Uh, we had Microsoft. Uh, we had uh, Nintendo Direct. We had PC Gamer. Uh, and um, is that it? I think that's it. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. it. So we had those six conferences. Which one sucked balls the most? I would have to say Bethesda. Bethesda and EA, I guess. Hmm. How do I judge that? I mean, because you're right; those two were the worst for sure. Uh, but mm-hmm. um, which one is the worst, though? 
What's uh, that, e- so? E A because it because because everything was just a was just a damage control. They didn't give anything that we wanted. Well, both of them were, were damage control. That's true. That is right. true. Um, I I got to give it to E A, dude. I think they were the worst. I I just have to. I mean. Uh, you know, uh, like uh, one, the last game they talked about was uh, The Sims 4, right? And uh, the new DLC. And now, um, I actually have played Sims before, uh, and uh, I much prefer Sims City, uh, but I played The Sims, and there's some fun in there a little bit. It's more, it's a girl game, uh, but um, it, 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 it's fun. Uh, I have no problem with The uh, Sims. Uh, but I do know that in that community, they've been screaming. Uh, for a magic DLC, magic, you know, ma- magical character DLC for freaking years, dude. And what do they give them? They give them uh, Copacabana mermaids. And it's like, you know, and then at the end they say, what's coming up next? Magical realms. So finally they are listening to their, their, uh, their audience. But why didn't you do it first? Oh, I know why. Because their Copacabana, you know, a Caribbean island thing that they're doing is all about the, eco- the, eco- the ecology of the world and the environment. And it's also about, you know, understanding yourself and the LGBTQRSE by WX1. Uh, and it's very important. That's why. So that cringe fest was a, a great way to finish your show, uh, and of course, even the best thing of it, which was the last, uh, was was uh, Jedi Fallen Order. They showing you a very unfinished, unpo- uh, unpolished game. So I say E3, uh, not E3. Hmm. EA Play was the worst. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Eagle Forty Three says Bethesda. I get it. Yeah, I, they both sucked. Anyway, uh, as soon as they uh, said Fallout seventy six. Uh, Bloody Battle Royale. Yeah, I was done. True. And their NPC, they're coming back. Yay. (laughs) Crazy bastards, man. Well, here's here's my logic. Mm -hmm. You know EA was going to be cringe, so there was no expectation. But Thesa is a fall from grace, so that's why it's worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, guys. Well, uh, this was uh, different than we had expected. I, uh, I, I guess I could apologize, but I'm not going to apologize. I, I had a great time <laughs> talking here. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> next week, though, on Wednesday, we will definitely watch the Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Uh, definitely come back for that, please. For real this time. For real, because uh, that is a great movie. If you haven't seen that, don't watch it. Come watch it with us. Uh, it's a killer movie. Um, uh, great Terry Gilliam. Uh, if you like Time Bandits, if you like Brazil, if you like Gilliam's style, you you got to check out that movie. Uh, but um, uh, thank you very much for this. Now tomorrow uh, we are doing uh, uh, on. Uh, of course, we have our comics news today, uh, which we have a lot to catch up on. I think, uh, and mm-hmm. uh, we also have the um, uh, Drawn and Quarter Fan Edition, Qu- which we will have Lone Wolf on, right? We'll do with Doug, yep, Doug, Doug Garrett. Lone Wolf, Doug Garrett. Uh, we had Doug Garrett on earlier. Great guy. Love chatting with him. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, so definitely come back for that. Uh, and oh, of course, and that's fully funded, by the way. It is fully funded. Excellent. Good yep. to hear. Good to hear. Uh, and of course, all the other things we do here. But uh, thank you very much, Booster, for coming. And uh, dude, we should do more video game stuff. We know a lot about video games, the three of us. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We I didn't really... That. I didn't even know how much a depth of knowledge I had until we started talking about it today. But I seem to know a lot more about video games than I thought. Um, you know, and uh, wow. th- these guys have their uh, have a lot of understanding too. We should do more of that, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you, Booster. Thank you, Denali. Uh, thank you, Chat. That was awesome fun. Uh, uh, it was, uh, I, and I love video games, and it was it's cool to talk about. But as usual, Denali's going to take us out of here. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Chess Rest told us what's going to happen tomorrow. Remember, no shows on Fridays, and we'll be back on Saturday for Fan Speak. Do we have mm. a guest for Fan Speak? Uh, let or... me check. Let me check real quick. Uh, Fan Speak mm-hmm. schedule. Uh, da, 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 da. I think uh, we might. Uh, I know they were working on a. Uh, there's a couple people Todd are working on, and I think Booster was working on someone as well. Uh, but uh, as of right now, I'm not sure. We might, though. We might. All right. Well, it'll be a surprise. Mm. We might have a guest, so join us nevertheless. Get connected and all that nice stuff. Uh, but as always, your perception shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. Namaste. 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 Later, guys. Aloha.